Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice, but on a mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Comedian Johnny Mitchell's here to tell us his crazy story. Johnny's going to be at the Brea Improv July 5th. I'm going to be in uh, Monterey tomorrow at the Golden State Theater and then uh, Napa, Uptown Theater Saturday. So come on out and say hi. Good to see you, Johnny. Thanks for having me, man. Good to see you. Yeah, your story is a very fascinating Thank one. you. Thank uh, you. Um, I'll read a couple of uh, beats and then we can get into the official particulars, as they say. Uh, you were a student in uh, Portland and yeah. uh, started selling weed in the early 2000s and um, made a million bucks by the time you were 23. Got uh, paid for your entire tuition. <laughs> also uh, sort of moved on to be a weed wholesaler mm -hmm. and uh, then worked a little with the Sinaloa cartel as well. And uh, then ended up in prison for a while. Yeah, just normal college kid Basic shit, you know? Basic stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't judge a lot of poor people behavior per right. se. I don't know if you're a poor person. No, no, not at all. That was the opposite. I was oh, quite well, well that's off. interesting. Now I'm yeah. judging. Yeah, no, 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 100%. Nobody feels bad for like the middle class kid who gets caught. You know, it's a little, it's almost cliche at this point. Yeah, when I was 20, if somebody had said to me or anybody I knew, I'll give you $10,000, just go drive to Mexico, mm -hmm. put a shopping bag, uh, hefty bag worth of weed in the back of your car and drive back. Everybody I knew, including me, would have went, fuck it, roll the dice. Yeah. Like, oh, so then we right. get all judgmental about right. these people, but it's like, <laughs> I I and everyone I know would have would have done it. But that was not your story. You come from what? Yeah, well, you know, my father was a lawyer, you know, obviously a shitty one, couldn't keep <laughs> me out of prison, but like he, uh, you know, I'm just, everybody sold... Everybody sold weed, right? In high school. Everybody was like, you know, especially from the 90s, everybody wanted to, every, we all grew up listening to hip hop. We, you know, grew up idolizing Nas and Jay-Z and shit like that. So that part wasn't remarkable, but I, I just kept like, I just kept at it, you know? I was like, started off nickel and diming. I didn't make any money for years selling weed. I was like an open micer of weed selling. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I just did it for the love of the game. And, and free I, weed. And free weed, of course. But I just kept elevating it like, you know, and, I, and then I got to college and, uh, you know, it was a really thriving weed market. I went to the U of O in Eugene, Oregon, and this is before legalization. So you could actually make some money doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every third person was like paying their rent, paying their tuition, selling weed. And I was like, no, 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 no. We have to make millions. I was always like pushing the envelope. I don't know why I'm like that. You know what I mean? Um but, you know, I just one thing led to another. I kept meeting people, meeting yeah. people, making more connections. And uh, it got to a point where I was like, fuck it. Let's just let's just make millions. Told my partner, I'm like, they're going to we see legalization coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. Let's just make millions while we can now, because this is like a special time in history. What is the most you had in your possession at any one time? Oh, uh, over a million. Yeah, probably like a million two. You know, we would re up. We'd have like in at least cash or in weed or no in, in cash. But wow. you know, you put aside a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand just for you know your buy, your re up. So, right. You know, and if something goes wrong, if you lose fifty pounds, that's a hundred thousand dollars out the door. So you try to keep about twice what you need to make your purchase. Mm -hmm. Try to keep about twice that cash on hand, plus whatever you have lying around. You know. So yeah, Was so the I cash did. in a safe deposit box was it in a oh, mattress? It's all over the place that's the hardest part about you know blowing up in the drug game is is what you do with your money we all know that by now so dude i i would have you know i paid friends to keep you know fifty thousand a hundred thousand in a safe deposit i had money you know in my parents attic i had storage units that i would just fill with you know whatever furniture and boxes put cash in there um i had so much cash at one point i remember i had 40 grand wrapped up in plastic, ready to be buried somewhere. I was at my mother's house and I was like, fuck it, I have nowhere to put this. Uh, I just need like a day. So I put it in a trash bag and I stashed it in her bathroom, like underneath her sink. I was like, I'll literally be back tomorrow. I just gotta figure out where to put this. I came back the next day. 
my mom's at home. I go into her bathroom. The bag's gone. Wow. I was like, Mom, hey, did uh, <laughs> you didn't find like a, a black garbage bag in here, did you? She was like, oh, yeah, I did while I was cleaning. I, I threw it in the trash. I was like, well, that's reasonable, right. you know? And then I was like, well, when when is garbage day? She was like, oh, it was this morning. Wow. Wow. $40,000 oh. a fucking teacher salary just in a some sanitation truck. <laughs> So the fucking GDP of the Dominican <laughs> Republic just <laughs> flushed down the drain, dude. And yeah. how long did you do this? So from 2000, I guess 2003 to 2010 when I got locked up. Yeah. And how'd you get caught? I got caught with money. Actually, I never got. They never found me with any product. I got caught because I was shipping weed all over the country, but primarily to like the East Coast, to uh, Massachusetts, New Jersey. New York City, uh, because that's where you could you know get the biggest markup. How could you ship it? How did you ship it? FedEx, UPS, oh really, uh, and the and the post office. And sometimes we would put we would start renting these mobile storage units. They started mm -hmm. to get like big around mm -hmm. this time. So mm -hmm. we would, you know, if if somebody needed you know fifty pounds in, say I don't know the Philadelphia area, we would just get an address for them, and then you know I would have like a fake ID, or I would pay somebody to go rent a storage unit and then we would stuff it with furniture and the product the merchandise and then you could track you could track its movements over four days as it drove across the country so that was a good way to do it mm. so that's why and, and so i never got caught you know that was a good hands-off method to like insulate yourself from actually you know getting caught red-handed but you know they're shipping i'm getting tens and tens of thousands of dollars mailed back to me every week and uh, so one time, as a package of money, I think it probably had like forty or fifty fifty thousand in it. It was going through like a FedEx sorting facility, and so you know they have drug sniffing dogs in there, and a dog must have picked up on it, right? Because sometimes we get the cash back, and it would just reek of weed smoke. Well, they have cash sniffing dogs too, yeah. although I don't just know. to sniff cash. Um, I don't know if they're sniffing the cocaine that's on the cash or the weed that's associated with the cash or probably maybe that. the cash probably that or what about the racist old founding father <laughs> right, that's yeah. on the cash maybe they've trained the dogs maybe they got a black lab right. who can smell a slave owner <laughs> i smelled a little toxicity yeah you know i smelled uh thomas jefferson but i've we've been stopped walking through miami like getting onto a cruise ship because we had cash i you know 400 bucks or something no they, shit they sniffed it out. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So, I mean, look, so that makes sense, right? Because that's that's a main way now for like the law to interdict drug traffickers is to go after their money. So, I wonder if the Jewish dogs can smell coins. <laughs> <laughs> the schnauzers and the beagles, which Absolutely. I'm assuming are the Jews of yeah. the dogs. Oh, yeah. They yeah. smell what nickels from... <laughs> <laughs> Maury, he can sniff a nickel uh, packed in coffee grounds from yeah. ten feet. <laughs> yeah, if you're, make sure if you go like hiking, like in the, you know, uh, on uh, K two or, or or fucking some mountain, make sure you have coins on you. So if you get buried in an avalanche, the they Jew send a beagle the out. Jewish yeah, coin sniffing dogs will come out and found, come find, find you. you. <laughs> so uh, you get caught. Yeah, the cash gets traced back. They get to traced you. back to me in Portland. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So and they put a case on me, uh, but they couldn't, you know, they, they knew that I had ties. They suspected because they caught me with so much cash. They, sus they were like, oh, my God, this guy's a fucking whale. Mm -hmm. Like, he's probably dealing heroin or coke or meth for a cartel. Right. And the reality was I never worked for a cartel. I They were one of my suppliers. I had mm -hmm. multiple different, you know, groups in Southern Oregon and Northern California that just had you know, copious amounts of weed that they would grow and they would crop every year. But one of the, those groups was the, you know, these guys from Sinaloa. So they were trying to get me to, they were like, we'll kick you loose today. You just work for us, you know? And, uh, you know, but I just, I, I refused to do it because I'm not going to, I'm not going to start snitching on the cartel because, you know, they could kill me in prison as easily as they could on the street, right? So, yeah. So, no, I just, I took it on the chin and I, I did a bid and, uh, you know, I started doing stand up in there. How long? Where'd you go initially? Uh, I, I did. I spent about eight months in the county jail fighting my case. Uh, I couldn't get bailed out. I had a no bail hold, which is wild. That's what they give like kingpins and, you know, right. illegal immigrants and shit. You and, wouldn't have got that today. 
I no, believe, no. in Oregon. No, fuck no. This was like right before the laws changed. Right. Like I remember sitting in prison reading about like Colorado making pot legal mm -hmm. as I'm, you know, covering my nose my, as my celly's taking a shit. Right. I'm sitting there <laughs> for fucking selling weed in Colorado and then Oregon made it legal like the year after I got out, I think. Can we look that up? I got out the beginning of 2012. I feel like Oregon made it legal in 2012. Let me ask about ventilation in the cell. Sure. Any, yeah, any fart fans at all? Any no, ventilation? No, no, no. Okay, listen to this. Here's the farting etiquette in prison. If, as soon, you, if you fart, you have to sit on the toilet and flush your farts. Oh, really? Yeah, and if you get, if, especially if you're new and you're in one of those holding cells where everybody, you're packed in there with like 20 guys, if you just blast a fart, you'll get a beat down. Mm. I saw it happen. Wow. You saw it happen. Yes, of course. Like, especially like homeless people and junkies would come in just filthy and we'd be like, yo, flush your fucking fart, animal. Right. Because, you know, like, I'm like a criminal. I'm in there. I got real problems. You know, junkies right. are in there treating it like a vacation. So the idea is you got to keep yourself clean. We have to we have to maintain some kind of semblance of dignity. Yeah, there must it's, be an order. It's got to be order. Ass related order. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you got to flush your fart, and when you take a dump, the uh, as soon as it crowns, you got to hit the water. You just got to keep hitting it. Yeah, the courtesy flush. I still courtesy. I took a dump right too. before the show. Nice. And I was in your bathroom courtesy flushing. Yeah, I walked in right after. Perfectly fine. Thank you. Yeah. God, I know how to shit, dude. I, I was there while he was shitting, and I'm here to say he did the courtesy <laughs> reach around. <laughs> hey, can I say this then? Um, because I I agree with you uh, in the courtesy flush. The courtesy flush is effective. It's not 100% bulletproof, mm -mm. but it's effective. And it's, a, it's effective for two reasons. One is it will... It will remove the initial salvo. Mm -hmm. And the next one is, is it'll create enough ambient sound to really unload. Yes. If you, if you do it simultaneously, <laughs> yes. Yes. you can unload with as much gusto, vigor, and as much mm -hmm. volume yeah. as you like if you hit it right. But now there's a problem. The problem, and so... You know, my policies, I try to do as little offloading in public as mm -hmm. humanly possible. Same. And we should all yeah. take that bold stance. Some call me a hero. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's for the greatest generation. But <laughs> but here's the problem. And I don't know if you I, I don't know who else is a courtesy flusher in this in this warehouse, in this studio. Nobody a, here looks like they're a courtesy I'm flusher. A, I'm a big courtesy flusher. People, this looks like an upper decker crowd. <laughs> I live alone. <laughs> it looks like they go uh, the opposite. I live alone. There's no courtesy. I uh, know. Nobody. I, all right, Dawson. Nobody does it at home. They do it when they're at the airport. I do it at home. Oh, you do I it at literally, home? I'm still institutionalized to where I courtesy flush alone no, that's, in my own house. But that's, that's essentially like when you have a dog... And, you know, it's domesticated. It's just your dog. And then you see before it lays down on the carpet, it walks in a circle a couple mm -hmm. times. Then it lays down. And then somebody goes, why is he walking? And I said, well, his ancestors out in the Serengeti would clear the grass by walking a circle. <laughs> but that's just a vestige sure. of that. Yours is just muscle memory from the joint. That's right. Exactly. Based exactly. Trauma. It's yeah. PTSD. Is right. What that is. So That's I <laughs> I did not spend time in prison. So I will do it at the public. You know, mm -hmm. at, at the restaurant yeah. or in the uh, at the airport. So the question the question's not the home. Sure. The question is the public. I'm not a courtesy flusher. I what? Don't, I don't know when we decided that a bathroom where people take a dump has to smell really nice no we didn't well yeah, well, well we i didn't guess decide, around, around the we just, around democracy when yeah we were you know around the time of indoor plumbing <laughs> yeah. i would say <laughs> let's let's ask the ancient greeks yeah. <laughs> what they thought about it they invented the aqueduct that's right <laughs> so all right so dawson surprisingly not a courtesy flusher but uh now i do it for selfish reasons but it but it benefits humanity. Mm. I don't want the guys washing his hands, hearing what's coming out of me. Sure. And I don't want him smelling what's coming out of me. For me, I don't want to have to step out of the stall mm -hmm. and lock eyes with this yeah. guy. So I do the courtesy flush in public, but 
there's a problem. Hmm. The problem is we used to rely on where the handle was. Right. The handle was back and to back the right, right, maybe back and to the left. I don't know if they make toilets maybe in that England sort of or something like that. Flip flop. You know? I'd be curious. Is yeah. the handle always on the right? But I feel like it was back and to right. the right. Yeah. Right. Which you could find. Of course. Now at the airport. They have the fucking center yeah, button, which right. is like, I tore some cartilage <laughs> yeah. trying to get to that <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, I was gotta... like, you're trying to do the full 180 reach exactly. around button push. Unclear whether you hit the piss button or the shit button because they divided yeah, yeah, the button. Mm -hmm. Any button in a storm, but you're, you're reaching back. Yeah. Then there is the comical motion sensor right. flush. Yeah, which is the worst. At the fucking... Yeah. That's at the airport. Yeah. So now you're reaching behind you doing the uh, John Cena thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you I can't mean? see me. Yeah. And just waving yeah. behind my asshole, like going, can I trigger this? Right. Do I have to stand up quickly and, and then sit do back down? I'll have to like do like squats and, yes. and, and, and propel myself off of the shitter just to make enough motion to get it to flush. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's inhumane. But, yeah. So what they really know. need is a button up front oh my god with Amazing. a campaign right for sure <laughs> you know what i mean yes hey if yes. you're a friend flush uh-huh or um some you know a picture of a butler yeah. holding out right. a, a silver tray right. courtesy flush please you, you know what i mean Be just courteous. just yeah. something picture something. of an inmate in an orange jumpsuit <laughs> right <laughs> being mouthfucked but he's he's still managed to flush you know mm -hmm. so yeah no no it's it's with a prison toilet you get enough sound because it's there like the industrial oh, yeah. whoosh. You right. can give birth to a turd. Right. As you hit the water, nobody's going to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was probably the, my favorite part about it. I miss it very much. <laughs> yeah. Prison food cannot be helping with this equation no. either. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's just sugar and carbs and, and you know, processed. Is processed it really shit. like what was what was the menu in prison? Oh, man, you're going to make me. If my Vietnam flashback is coming here, uh, like like shepherd's pie, mm -hmm. which I don't know. Do you guys like that dish? I I, I, like I would if I was at a Marie Callender's, but I don't know about <laughs> Sing Sing, you know? I mean, it was so foul and it was so like you get it cold. Yeah. I mean, it was like they microwaved it, but they wanted to save money on the electric bill. And so they serve it to you half cold. And like that was, you know, they would give it to us three times a week in the county jail. Uh, where they give you just enough food to keep from starving. If you don't have money on your books for your commissary or whatever, you, you're going to go hungry. Even really? though they, you know, even eating there, or whatever they give you. Um, did you guys go to public school? Yes. So you remember the hot lunch line? Yeah. Right. Like there was a, 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 in my generation, they started to sell like Pizza Hut and like they're kind of like the richer kid line, mm. and like you get better food. Yeah. And there was the poor government cheese line. It's food like that, but. The food that like didn't make it to the hot lunch line that was like no good for the you know what I mean like yeah, that's other different tiers that's the level it's like Aramark fucking crap you know the I was before the era of any recognizable food provider <laughs> at, on campus but also at Dodger Stadium like they you couldn't go there and get a Jody Maroney's dog. Mm. You'd have to just get the Dodger dog. Yeah. And yeah. The, everything was generic. Yeah. And it was stadium food. Right. And then there was, you know, public school food. And there was no recognizable brands. Right. Or, or restaurants or anything. It was all just, you know, fish sticks was always a oh, bad day. Fuck. Uh, they figured out that the, the part that I always found interesting about the offerings at the public school is Pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John's has figured out a way to produce a large pizza for like six ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's at the cheapest food imaginable. Yeah. It's got thirteen slices. Right. Like we were well below that level. The pizza was not pizza shaped, which drove me nuts. It was oblong. Oh it my was, god! It was a you square. Style. It was. It always tasted like shit. The hot dog. They fuck up the hot dogs. Like literally, you can go into any car dealership around the country on any Saturday and get a decent hot dog yeah. for free. Right. Just for fucking walking around mm -hmm. looking at RVs. Mm -hmm. But they could not provide that. 
the meat was gray. Yeah. It was yeah. weird. The hamburgers seemed sort of boiled. It, everything was fucked up. And it's like, listen, McDonald's can figure out a way to serve one of these things up for 49 yeah. cents. Mm-hmm. Why can't you guys do that? 100%, 100%, dude. Oh. Spaghetti served. Oh. Can you imagine eating Every, a spaghetti out of a plastic, like the a, a, a cutout in a plastic tray? Everything was served with an ice cream scooper. So the spaghetti, yeah, right. the longest strand of spaghetti I ever found in junior high <laughs> was an inch and three eighths. Yeah. Like there is no uh, lading the tramp situation yeah. going on here. It's just <laughs> scoop. Plop and then green beans, same scooper. Plop, like everything had to be delivered right. via an ice cream scooper, right. which somehow made it more disgusting. Like yes. obviously they washed it off, but no, like, but they were like, we're not going to make pizza in the right shape, and we're not going to make spaghetti in the right, right shape. Spaghetti's just going to look like half a softball sitting on right. it. And I'm Italian, so I take great offense. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it was bad. Yeah. But the sad part is, is those of us who weren't incarcerated. We're eating about the same as you were <laughs> right, on the outside right. if you're involved with the L.A. Unified School exactly, District. Exactly, exactly. So that's why that when you're locked up and you got money on your books, you just you're eating butterfingers and you know uh, spreads, right? A lot of top ramen, mm. and you put you know you, you they get very creative with the way that they make top ramen spreads. Mm. Um, a lot of uh, you know everything's still bad for you. But you could at least kind of, you know, my cell looked like a 7-Eleven. Mm-hmm. It was because I was in there with a lifer who was kind of like the shot collar guy. We had Jordan sneakers. We had, uh, you know, fucking dirty magazines and shit. It got to a point where it was kind of nice. Yeah, not a bad room. Mm-hmm. It was kind of, especially when he would like leave for a couple of weeks to go to like the medical unit, like to a different prison. It was kind of like when you have a roommate and he uh-huh. leaves for a couple of weeks to go yeah. back home for Thanksgiving. You're like, I mean, you had to take care of his cat, but other than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I had to feed his fish. <laughs> and so he's still in. Yeah, he uh, might be dead. Uh, I'm not sure. I know he was on death row because so the day I got shipped out of the Two Rivers Correctional Facility, I'm just being specific so your listeners don't think I'm lying. The day I got shipped out, um, or a couple days after I got shipped out, there was a riot on the prison yard, and he ended up killing a guy mm-hmm. in that riot. Uh, they stepped to hit some 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 guy had an old beef. These are like white guy biker gang mm-hmm. uh, type of people, right? And so some guy came at him with a knife and my cellmate, Jimmy, hit him, just knocked him in the in the head and he fell back and he died. Wow. So well, that's self-defense, right? I mean, Jimmy was doing life anyways, but I know he was fighting that case from death row for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, being in those kind of conditions, just like you withers away at your mind. Did you? So I don't know if he's alive now or not. Did you think he was innocent? Did he think he was innocent? No, no, no he definitely did it. He definitely killed the person that gave him. He, he definitely was guilty of murder that put him away for life. Uh, and he was like, he, he had accepted his fate that he wasn't going to get out. He lost all his appeals. But he was like, yeah, you know, I feel bad for what I did. But, you know, I was on so much meth. I, mm-hmm. I, I was spun out of my mind. So, uh, so yeah. And, and then I, have, I didn't talk to him about when he, you know, killed this person seemingly in self-defense. But, you know, his in lawyers. Yeah, his lawyers contacted me after I was out, and they were like, can you be a character witness and, you know, all this shit? And I was like, yeah, of course, but, you know. You were like, nobody makes ramen <laughs> yeah. while looking at a hustler <laughs> yeah. like Jimmy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did, um, and when you kill somebody, like, you know, he admits he did it. Yeah. Uh, the the reason he was in for life was yeah. killing somebody. Do they try to soften the landing a little bit, like, that's I would do that emotionally. Like I'd be like, I killed this guy, but but he, you know, he liked soccer and hauling oats, yeah. and so it's like, what, you know, what did he? Re- what kind of guy was he really? Yeah, yeah. Or you know, he had a, he was a deadbeat dad. Like, yeah. was he trying to? Do you do that? Do you think that's a phenomenon? <laughs> that's a really good point. Trying to justify it. Well. If not well, justified, at least soften it. Yeah, a little sure, bit. sure. Soften the landing. That's yeah. what they're doing with the economy, right? Mm-hmm. That's very we got uh, a political soft speak. landing coming. Yeah, uh, I think for guys like Jimmy that are high-ranking me- gang members or whatever, I think it actually gets them stripes. So in the twisted world of prison, I think if you're in there for killing somebody, unless it's like an old lady or a kid or something right. like that, 
which I was around those guys too, and those guys get brutalized. Nobody respects that. But I think if you got a murder on your on your sheet, on your jacket, I think uh, it's the opposite. You're not apologizing for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, I just people... mean in the quiet ramen moments. Oh, sure, yeah, with you. <laughs> oh, with me and and with God. Yeah, yeah, I think he was contrite for sure. I think he uh, he he kind of he's like, yeah, you know, I went to, I was dealing, I was using and dealing methamphetamine. Uh, and my partner stole from me. And so uh, I went over to take back my drugs and my money and my gun ended up going off and shooting him and oops, his girlfriend in the head. Uh, that's what happened. You know, so you hear and you're like, OK, I don't know. I mean, this gun. Wow. You're just up. a great guy. You're yeah, just right. misunderstood, Jimmy. <laughs> you don't want to argue with him. Did yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> did you, were you able to refrain from big garish spending when you were on the outside? Yes, I was. Because I'm, I'm like a white kid from Portland, Oregon. Like we're not we just we're frugal. So I was I bear. I, I saved a lot of cash. Mm-hmm. They seized a lot of it, but I got away with some of it. Which oh, has really? been spent now. It's been spent now. Yeah, I saved it for a lawyer and for my being in, you know, you got to have money in prison, right? Put put money on your books and shit. Your dad, the lawyer, didn't. No, I, I offer fired up him. Anything? Uh, no, I <laughs> well, didn't. Well, what about putting stuff on the books for yeah, you? Yeah, they did. Of course they did. But um, I didn't want to give them drug money. I gave it to like my friends and shit before. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to like implicate them or get them involved at all. But, you know, they obviously, you know. Well, said, your mom's already muling it out to the trash yeah. can. So <laughs> right. <she's deep>. <laughs> <laughs> my mom owes me one. <laughs> my mom owes a, a run for me. <laughs> all right. We'll take a yeah. break. We'll uh, come back. We'll get more into Johnny's story. And we'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Turo, T-U-R-O dot com. Well, let me tell you about Simply Safe. You've heard us talk about Simply Safe and how they were named Best Home Security of 2023 by U.S. News and World R- Report. Oh, sorry. I get so excited talking about Simply Safe. Well, they're not resting on their laurels. They're always innovating. New two-in-one smoke detector, CO detector, distinguishes between fire and cooking smoke, so you get fewer false alarms. Everyone here uses Simply Safe. We always have. They've been on board for over a decade. 24-7 professional monitoring service, by the way. Trained agents respond in an emergency dispatching police, firefighters, or EMTs right to your front door, even if you're away or can't be reached. Cost under a buck a day, and right now you get 20% off your new system when you sign up for interactive monitoring. Just visit Simply Safe, two eyes, simplysafe.com slash Adam. Save that 20%. When you go to simplysafe.com slash Adam, there's no safe like Simply Safe. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Yo, Ace Man, love the show. Just want to make a comment on the not wasting food. The proper term for it, if you're out at a restaurant, or especially if you're a busboy or a waiter, is the bus tub buffet. I've eaten many a whole crab leg out of the bus tub buffet. There's no fucking way I'm throwing that crab leg in the garbage. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Absolutely. Good for you. And I, I don't know when everything turns gross, like when other fellow human beings come in contact with it. You know what I mean? Like when people go, somebody had that crab leg on their plate. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. And you have crab legs on. So yeah. who are you? Yeah. And then who and are the rest of us? Yeah. And, and but But the math doesn't work out. So here's here's how we have to go through life. Every human being on the planet, all other eight billion people, are gross except for me. 
Because that's really what you're saying. Right. If I touch this crab leg, it's fucking fine. Mm. But if you touch the crab leg on the other side of the restaurant, then I can't eat it because it's now polluted by you. I don't it's, it's a, I don't buy that math. No, I'm, I don't either. I, it's right up there with, you know, the reincarnated. Yeah. Like, I was a nobleman. <laughs> right. I was a knight. Right. Like, somebody cleaned up horse shit. Yeah. It can't be everybody was a, a nobleman yeah. and a prince and a queen. It's like, do the math. Yeah, we can't totally. all be gross. Yeah. No. And then it, build up your immunity, people. Yes. <laughs> build up your fucking immunity. I mean, George Carlin said it back in the day, oh right? Oh, my God. But it's like, yes. It's like, ha- get a little shit on your thumb every now and then. Eat <laughs> off somebody else's plate. That's right. You know, let somebody on a plane cough on you. Like, what happened to me yesterday? You what know, happened I, yesterday? I sit in coach. I'm sitting coach still. I mean, my career is going pretty well, but, you know, I like to save a buck. So I'm sitting uh, it, like 32F. At the back, you know that's like the very back of right. the plane. It's awful, and I'm six foot six. Like you're a gangly guy, you're a yes. tall guy. You get it. So I'm sitting next to, you know, just a. Uh, they're so gross, and I'm coming back back from Portland. So it's like a couple, but this is like you don't know the guy could be the the girl and the girl could be the guy, oh, sure. right? Portland, and they're both wearing yeah. matching like sweatpant jackets, like like mm-hmm. their track suits from their college. <laughs> wow. It just foul. There's just it, and it's like the rest of us have to look at you, right? Like, but they used to wear suits to go on planes. It was such an honor to go on an airplane that you would put on a suit to travel. And now I've got this androgynous fat couple wearing their Oregon State Beaver matching hoodies and sweatpants sitting next to me, and it's and they're just coughing the whole time, and they're fucking bitching, and they're it's like it really is it it's. It makes it makes me welcome the fall of the empire, the fall of America, being with, you know, yeah, they're too comfortable. But yeah, it's exactly. I, I I don't know how to say it. It's like it, it's so you don't live. It, they, they just absorb the space and treat it like it's their living room. You know what I mean? I think it's. I I think what's going on is is there's the animal kingdom, mm-hmm. and then there's humans. And uh, there used to be kind of a chasm. (laughs) There was a large space in between the two. Because my dog would lick his balls in front of the Queen of England. Right. And nobody... Nobody would have a problem with it because <laughs> yeah. they'd go, he's that, you know, yeah. but you would you would blame a human being for engaging in that sort of behavior. Well, you have an intern that could actually that I can actually lick his balls physically. Byron. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Byron. Can. Byron, can, Byron can. You have an intern or an employee now that can. You, Byron, you can lick your own balls and I've been licking your fucking balls for four and a half months <laughs> and you could have done it yourself. Jesus. Yeah. Christ. He sucked his own dick on the Legion of Skanks. Yeah. It's on his resume. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to say no. I should have taken a deep dive. <laughs> well, <laughs> He's I, like, I should have done a background check on this fucking I, guy. I, I have many I have many thoughts. First off, sucking your own dick makes you sound like you're criminally insane. On, on one hand, there's some judgment that goes along with it. But it also suggests you have a long dick. Mm-hmm. Because people think it's solely about flexibility. Right. But it's really not. It's about meeting in the middle. Totally. Somewhere. So if you were sort of, you know, the human pretzel, presumably you could suck your own dick. But I would say that it's probably a combo. Mm -hmm. Look, if my dick was four feet, then I could suck my own dick. Right. And I'm not very flexible. Right. If I was super flexible, I could suck my own dick. Right. And I think it's probably a combo, but it it suggests that you have a big dick. Yeah. Well, look at Byron. I mean, he's no Pilates instructor, right? Like the guy's, you know, he's rapidly aging. Uh, He's he's overweight. He's not wafy. Yeah. Yeah. So he probably has a a huge hog. Exactly. He's probably packing something. A lot of yoga and a lot of foreskin. So he's oh, a lot of yoga and foreskin. So you, did, did you get your did you get your mouth? Are you uncut? Y- yeah, I'm uncut. But I want to clarify. I was a gentleman. I didn't suck the whole thing on stage. I kissed the tip. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, OK. You're one of the you're like a 15 year old. girl. You're like it's like the first blow job you ever get from a girl. I just had to prove I could do it, you know? Yeah. But you just got to the foreskin. 
Yeah, it was. It's a lot of tugging, and I'm not gonna say it didn't hurt, but I got it done. Did you Gave pull the foreskin back? Like, how does that work with a? No, no you I, pull I it pulled forward. it forward. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Stretchy. He's right. added an extra yeah. extension to his penis. So it's just hanging. It's like it's like loose foreskin almost. It's almost like pulling a fucking a, a t-shirt over your head or something. Oh my god, it's a That's blessing horrendous. and a curse. Well, I want to say sorry. Look, I don't run the cock sucking sanctioning body, but <laughs> no. I don't count this regulation. as a cock suck. Like no. right, for right. me. I'm the guy, so like, you know, when they do the power lifting and stuff, yeah. and the guy gets it up yeah. and he and he, he he pulls it back and then he does a clean and jerk, but he doesn't hold it for three seconds Just and throws on like, yeah. I got the I got the air horn going. Yeah. That's not a lift. Right. Not a clean lift. Right. You getting on foreskin. Not a lift. No, no, that's a goof. That's a that's a you know rush week in college. I want I want to meet somebody who's actually made themselves ejaculate from sucking their own dick okay, have i put the head in my mouth before yes did oh. i do it on stage no because it oh, was a okay. public place and there was a lot of people around and you I, know I I, I I wasn't thinking quite clearly i was a little drunk i had to be to get it done but i well, think we just uh, an official over to <laughs> but you know and by the way putting your mom in the first row <clears throat> right you know yeah it has a tap <laughs> yeah hindsight being 2020 <laughs> right, right. comps for mom Look. Next time, put her in the Negro yeah. balcony. Yeah, that's right. Don't put her right up front. No one comes from sucking their own dick. It's still a, a real pain in the back and ass. Yeah. All right. Now, here's what I know. Um, what I know, or at least from what I learned from uh, doing Loveline and maybe seeing Ron Jeremy attempt this once, mm. I think the real way to do it is you get on your back and you throw your legs over your head. You get on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. You're, you're the bottom of, of the, course. your head's the bottom of the I did it standing up. Yeah. And that adds to the difficulty factor. There's no mm. there's no so, doubt. So but Ron the, Jeremy could put his legs, I guess so, right? You could use gravity right. to your advantage. That's right. And just with your hips totally, totally. Yeah, pushing down on totally. it. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's still something I couldn't do. I'll tell no. you that much. I did I did have a love line call once where some like sixteen year old guy said he he was gay but his like stepdad didn't know he was gay and he like walked in and uh they walked into the bedroom and you know him and this dude were like going at it kind of thing and I, you know the dad was like christian you know <laughs> oh, no. yeah and i was like i was like um what exactly was, were you doing because you know there's walking in when you're uh, a deeply religious man uh with your son like kissing another guy oh. or, or giving him a back rub and then they're man the but this it keeps is, going yeah. from there. Sure, sure. He said when the when the stepdad walked in, the kid had thrown his legs over his head and was sucking his own dick and this guy was beating off to him. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even have that one in my lexicon oh my of disappointed dads. Like I had he was on top of me yeah. or I was blowing him. Yeah. But this this is next level, right? I, I mean on the other hand, it depends on how you choose to look at it, right? This could be just an elevated version of a classic teenage circle jerk. You know, we we jerked off now you sound like your dad trying to make a case for one of his clients. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. No, this is like we 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 did that. We had eighth grade jerk off sessions. We'd be under uh, sleeping, but we'd been been in our sleeping bags. But we'd be like in a you know some somebody's dark basement, and we'd all be like seeing who can come first. So maybe <laughs> maybe uh, I they had this kid had a buddy their their Byron who was like let me let me one up you. Mm. Let me show you how you really have fun. Uh, I don't. So it could have been that. I'd rather see that than I'd rather catch my son circle jerking with his friend, blowing himself, than <laughs> catch my son kissing a boy. You would. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Really kissing like the passionate kissing is weird and intimate. I I would almost yeah, kissing's really weird. I'd almost rather now you're get saying a, you're not speaking as a, a Oregon born comedian. You're speaking as a religious. 
yes. stepfather. That's right. Yes. For clarity. Exactly. Yeah, no, no. I'm a, I'm a member of like, you know, one of those Christian churches now. Obviously, I went to prison. That's what you do. You find uh, God. Oh, did you find God? No, oh. no, no. I pretended to be Muslim just so, just because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Uh, I was wearing a kufi. Really? No, but I would rather, I'd honestly rather get a prison blowjob. Swear to God, I'd rather get a prison bl- blowjob than like pa- make out with you. Uh, I think yeah. that's gayer. Business. That's gayer than getting yeah. like, you know, a blowjob because you're owed a pack of cigarettes. All right. Right? Don't yeah. you agree? Um, you know, they both would probably fall under the heading of gay. <laughs> But, but that's a big umbrella term. We're going to create a category called gay er. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because because the blowjob has a sort of utility to it. Totally. Which is basically like, look, I need to bust a nut. Mm-hmm. This isn't a women's prison. Yeah. God knows if I was on the out, if I was in Miami right now, I certainly wouldn't be blown right, by you. Right. But we're not. So here's what we got to do. It's like a misdemeanor. It's, it's like a gay it's misdemeanor. It's essentially like blaming that Argentinian soccer team whose plane went down for eating human flesh. Exactly. What the fuck are we going to do? Right. <laughs> right. We got to live. Exactly. So there's no judgment. Now you do that, you know, in North Hollywood, yeah. you know, Jeffrey Dahmer does it. All right. Now there's a judgment mm. right attached to it. Yeah. So, so as the religious stepdad, sure. Who walks in, in into his stepson's room you would rather see the friend blowing himself while your son is beating off. <laughs> I think I'd fucking laugh. Then, then <laughs> making out. Yes. Okay, totally. Chris, where do, you, where do you got? I think Johnny presents a good argument. I, I was it's with you, solid. Adam, but yeah, now yeah. after hearing yeah. It's mitigating circumstance. You know, ah. I think that's like, that, like, I, a, like a felony gay is obviously, you know... Uh, butt sex, right? Yeah. Uh, woke, though. You know what I mean. That's a, it's kind of a it's just a point now. But I think like misdemeanor gay. That's like that that kind of activity. It's my rap name. You can but... get it off your misdemeanor gay. You well, can get that off your record. All you can right. still go on and have a life if you I, can. I were blowing yourself in a in a circle jerk. Let me just push back a little, Johnny. Sure. Well, that's what he said. I, Anyways, uh, sorry. I argue <laughs> that watching the friend suck his own dick. While you beat off, while there's no contact with the friend, although it could be assumed that maybe there was some the night before, (laughs) uh, suggests a certain level of depravity. Sure. You you know what I mean? Like, like now we're getting into a different realm here sexually that transcends the kiss or the Mm -hmm. reach around, you know? Right. And so what I would be worried about as the religious stepdad is is now we have gay and weird. <laughs> right. Whereas before yeah. we just had to deal with gay. So do right. you they've upped the ante rather whereas Johnny's saying, oh, they're just experimenting. It's not it's not up to there yet. Yes. So yeah, like, you know, you're you're circle jerking, that's, you know, in the eyes of God, it's frowned upon. Now you're kind of bringing in the devil. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I I think <sighs> But I don't know. As a defense lawyer, right? <laughs> I, how are we to know that he's jerking off to his friend blowing himself? Mm. What if they're simply just because we would? I think you circle could jerk in a in a circle. Obviously, we would be circle jerking, but it wouldn't be to like our friends. It would just it would be to like our imagination. Where are the right? eyes looking? Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's I don't know. It's it, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. This sounds pretty fucking gay and concerning. But this is if I had to create some doubt in the mind of the jury right right this is what i would this is what i would say well if i was the da i would just fire back and say when you're staring at a hustler and jerking off how do we know you're being aroused by the imagery of the hustler Mm -hmm. like at some point we have to assume that wherever your gaze Mm -hmm. pardon the pun is upon that is the subject and the motivation of your erotica. Right, but you're still like if they if this is the first sexual experience they've ever had, they're both technically still virgins. Right. And so and it doesn't really they no exchanging of fluids or anything. I, I like put that. my you, clients on the stand and be like, look, you you're gonna say that it was a contest. Who could bust a nut the quickest? Now you have this gymnast, right? Or this right. guy who's just, you know, he's a he's a freak. Maybe he's Asian. Maybe he doesn't have, uh, he's missing a rib, right? Mm-hmm. That Marilyn Manson thing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, check this out. It could be a gnarly thing, right? So you, all your friends are, are skateboarding, doing little ollies. And this motherfucker's like, watch me hit this half pipe. 
Right. Could be kind of that kind of thing too. It's just like mm. the Mountain ah. Dew of yeah. uh, the Mountain Dew extreme of circle jerking, right? <laughs> You're right. Watch me blow myself. Yeah, no one ever accuses the guys from Jackass of being gay. Thank you. <laughs> Boom. Rest <laughs> my case, your true. honor. We make quite a legal team. All right, well, there's two circling back to circle jerking back. The destruction of our society. Mm. And and I agree with you when you brought up the dress codes on the airplane. You can find Fetterman, the big bald guy wears the hoodies. Um who, by the way, cannot speak Full in a mouth. sentence, oh, which is a wild. bizarre. <laughs> we're, that, clip, we're like, that clip was wild. We're like, he's got a disability. Uh, understood, <laughs> but he shouldn't be making policy. Like, yeah. I'm not saying take the handicapped and put them in a wood chipper. Right. I'm saying don't put them in positions where right. they can make policy if they're severely impacted. And there's a clip of him speaking in front of Congress, just like, you know, saying I-95 35 times or something. But yeah. there's a there's another one where he's with Biden. Yeah, I just saw that and one. And this is the decorum part. Like, the president of the United States has come to your town, and you're going to share a podium yeah. with him. And you're like, which cargo shorts should I wear, hon? Um, it's weirdly sort of applauded, but it really is the downfall of totally. our, our society. Totally. We need decorum yeah. we need um there's hierarchy hierarchy uh there's also a kind of a uh there there's there's a it's, it's like christmas trees should look like christmas trees yes. should be decorated like christmas trees christmas songs shouldn't have the word fuck in them <laughs> you know what i mean like there's just a certain Circle this jerk is what should we be do. just freehand. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. within the safe conf confines of a mummy bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we can find that. There's also what you're speaking of from prison with the uh, shit thumb is uh, once again, somebody tweeted me an article. Once again, Purell, bad for you. Not good. Been saying this for Wait, 25 what, what years. Is this? The hand, the hand sanitizer. sanitizer. It not, kills all the good bacteria. Right. As well, so. Right. At some point, when I'm right about everything, at some point, will somebody stop and go, maybe the next thing I'm talking about could be correct three years from now? Right. Or are we just going to... Clean slate every we're time. We're just going to yeah. do this dance of <laughs> yeah. the tarts where yeah. I say something, you tell me I'm gross and nuts, and then it turns out to be true, and then we shake the etch a sketch yeah. and we start brand new every single time. So whatever it is I say, you go, that's wrong, and then I turn out to be right, and then we just rinse and repeat for my entire adult life. It's like a marriage. You have yes. you build up no equity with your wife. No. There's no equity no, built up in podcasting or there, there, being a media uh, figure. The, and None. It's like it's like woke points. Yeah. You never build up enough. You can't no. store woke mm -mm. points in the bank. The no. second we find some old tape of you yep. saying the N word, yep. all the marching with BLM exactly. and all the million women's march yeah. and all the donations and exactly. all the speaking engagements, right. it all goes out the window totally. with one, mm -hmm. one faux pas. Yeah, I would give. All, I would do all of that just to be able to say the N word. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Twenty nineteen was different. Let's. Uh, all right. So Fetterman is wearing shorts. Yeah, more casual so than a guy in a hoodie crazy. on the plane. Yeah, it's so crazy, dude. But can I also say this? Back from the gym. There's a. There's a. There's also. I will carve out some room, for, you know, there could be, uh, an event that's a that's a you know black collar event you know. Uh huh. But maybe Kevin Smith shows up in a hockey jersey. Sure. And I go, okay, that's that's his thing. His yeah. brand, but yeah. then he comes up and delivers a funny, eloquent, mm -hmm. interesting speech, right, right. you know. Or maybe Snoop Dogg shows up in something a little inappropriate, but that's his thing. Mm -hmm. But he's kind of earned his way. Right. Uh, Fetterman can't string together a sentence. No. So I would argue that he needs to swing by the men's suit warehouse. No, Fetterman delivered how he dressed. That's, That's right. He made Biden look like Farrakhan. Right. Like, he, <laughs> like it was wild. Well, let's let's see if we can listen to it or if we have it. Sound, please. Always Where's sound. It? A little over a year ago. 
a little over a year ago. The president and I were standing right next to each other at a collapsed bridge in western Pennsylvania, a bridge that I drove over just the night before with my young son. And he showed up with just hours, hours after that, bra that bridge collapsed there. And he promised to make sure that any resources that they needed and any help and support. And guess what? And guess what? The, the, that bridge was rebuilt less than a year, well, well in front of time. And again, and now I'm standing next to the president again, oh. next to a, a collapsed bridge here. And he is here to commit to work with the, the governor and the, the, the delegation to make sure that we get this fixed quick, fast as well, too. This is a president that is committed to infrastructure. Yeah, and then on top of that, uh, the, the jewel uh, kind of a uh, uh, law of the inflation uh, uh, bill that is going to make sure that there's going to be bridges all across like this, all across the America getting rebuilt. It's a pleasure to be here and to introduce my, my friend, Congressman Boyle Bile. Boyle uh, Bile. Oh, wait, wait. Let the congressman say his name, which is funny. Uh, so uh, the uh, congressman uh, comes up and he's like, uh, my name is Brad Bilsing. Like, <laughs> oh, you should shit. know it's not Boyle Bile. <laughs> I, I my that. parents have to be the cruelest <laughs> people on the planet oh. to name me Boyle Bile. Bile. Like I have enough. I have a hard enough time getting laid. I had to suck my own dick yeah. all through junior high. Yeah. <laughs> but he's Just like, fit in. you. There's a if if that tape. If you get the part where he calls him Boyle Bile, uh, the other the congressman does come up and kind of like just for the stenographer. Right, you know, my, just, just um, for the record, my name is Jeez. this. It's not. Wow. It's not Boyle Bile. But this reminds me. You guys have seen Terminator Two. When the T one thousand can he can just get into somebody's body and yeah, sound right. like them? It's like he did that into Biden's body. That's his 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 delivery, his stuttering. Well, maybe his, maybe this. I was thinking about this, but I didn't talk about it, but we we can find it. But you know, there's a lot of comedians who be like, I don't want this guy opening for me because he destroys, right? <laughs> and then I gotta go up there. <laughs> sure, you know what I mean. <laughs> maybe this is Biden. He requests oh, just, <laughs> this is Biden <laughs> bury, going. burying the feature. You think? Yeah, he's just kind of going. Right I, I want the guy to be a six, but not a nine. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. I gotta go out yeah. after him. So maybe there's that. Yeah. So I was kind of thinking of that, like maybe he's going to travel around because then when you hear Biden speak after that jumbled mess, mm -hmm. he sounds relatively coherent. Right. And I came up with this other idea with with Biden, which is. We'll find Boyle Bile in a second. Hey, it's just the last 20 seconds of that whole speech, but we got to get the congressman. Yeah, that's uh, it's that's OK. So I don't even I barely watch the news that Fetterman. What is his what is his rank? What is his position? I think he's a congressman. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. No, senator. that's trash. Oh, senator. He's a oh, senator. One of two senators. He's a senator. senator. Sorry, yes. In Pennsylvania? Yes. That tracks, dude. I drove through western Pennsylvania a couple weeks ago. It's, uh, yeah, that <laughs> makes total sense now. Oh, do we it's have a barbaric We'll find place. him addressing Congress. You don't need the entire address, uh, address just sort of the jumbled wow. part. But Let's See, there he's got a suit on. Yeah. Um. Really, like the, you know, the 95, 95, 95, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, obviously, the, you know, you're pretty much preoccupied with, the, with 95, and I, know, I certainly am too, and we know it's a major. He looks like uh, a three-strike inmate, like uh, petitioning not just for, for, for clemency. Pennsylvania, but for the East, the East Coast. And a lot of Pennsylvanians are worried that the delays and repairs bring to its stand still deal. You know, I'm glad to see last night you were so quick to get $3 million to the emergency relief the funds got out so quickly. Just personally, like, it just seemed $3 million wasn't enough. <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like it, it's going to be even a lot more expensive uh, than, than, than that. But uh, I, I get the sense, you know. All right. 95, 95, 95. Okay, there's issues. Yeah. And so he needs to rest. So it's just, it's but, the beginning oh, of the end, right? Oh, well, let me continue my thoughts. Sure. And then we'll, we'll get back to the end and the beginning. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I agree. Um, I would, if I was Biden, have Fetterman speak before me, mm -hmm. wherever I was. Mm. And I would also have a guy 
on stage with me. And I would call him, you know, it was a famous Lee Majors role, but it was called The Fall Guy. If you just put a suit on, you're going to, I'll put, I'll give you the Secret Service earpiece. Right. So it looks like you're doing something. Yeah. If I ever go down, you go down immediately with me. Oh. If I trip, then then we have plausible deniability. We both caught our heel on the same piece of frayed carpet. You know what I mean? That's brilliant. We both hit the sandbag. That was yeah. like, if if you go down, look, if you're walking through yeah. a supermarket and you eat shit, everyone's gonna laugh at you. Mm. If two of you yes. eat shit, it's a supermarket's fault. Sure, yeah. sure. That's on them. Yes. You're praying when you go down. Somebody right. goes down right. Right. right next to you at the same time because right. it goes from you being one of the three stooges to we have a serious problem at the yeah. supermarket, right. right? So he can literally just travel around with a guy. And if there's ever a stumble or slide down the stairs or he doesn't know the direction to walk off stage, right. again, if you have a mate for that, like if you go, he doesn't know where to, I don't, we, we didn't know where to go. Much better right. than you doing anything. Mm, completely change the optics. Completely yeah. change totally. the optics. Maybe he dives on him. He says, well, I thought I heard a shot. No, it has, to be, it has to be accidental simultaneously because you want to look like you both slipped. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. What's what's your excuse then? Say this happens. Well, let's, let's, let's look at the context here. Right. Like that last time he tripped. Right. And let's just say, remember that time he was going up the stairs for uh, Air Force One mm -hmm. and he stumbled yeah. multiple times right first off <laughs> the argument by the folks defending him on msnbc is like it was windy that day that makes it a much worse situation right totally <laughs> a, a gust of wind was able to take him out to blow yeah. this elderly lady with some yeah, fucking yeah. Oh, osteoporosis over okay that's that's a bad excuse now picture that same thing where he slipped multiple times on the stairs yeah. going up to air force one now picture it with my fake Secret Service guy walking next to him, slipping at the same time. Right. Yeah. It goes right from Biden to, what the fuck's wrong with those stairs? Yeah. Right. See what I'm saying? Totally. So travel with a fall guy. Yes. <laughs> literally, have, literally a fall guy. <laughs> and have Fetterman open <laughs> for you. That's you look great, like a genius. Dude. We yeah. need a match. You know, we need a mashup of Dawson. You can, you can find it. Fetterman saying the name of the congressman or the senator who's trying to uh, boil biles. Uh, and uh, and Biden talking about uh, Javier Baccaria. Uh, those two would be kind of funny to mash up. All right, so we have the rest of it. But the congressman, the poor guy, like that's just got to be. Right. Yeah. It's that's poor uh, Bile. That's got to be horrible for Byron Boyles or whatever his name is. Let's Let's see. It's a pleasure to be here and to introduce my my friend, Congressman Boyle Bile. Boyle Bile. <laughs> this guy's to set the record straight. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Congressman Brendan Boyle, but <laughs> the main wow. reason why I'm here for wow. Wow. Well, what would you do? Holy shit. If, Holy like, shit. I want to introduce my friend, uh, Shitty Doucheman. <laughs> and you get up there and it's it's Sean yeah. Jackson. <laughs> like, like you'd have to set the records straight other than they think your name is Boyle Bile. Oh my god. I wish he would have just cucked out and just taken it, you yeah. know? Like hi, I'm I'm Boyle Bile. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reason I need your vote, yeah. vote Boyle. <laughs> vote Boyle. Yeah. Vote Bile. Let's put some bile in the Senate this year, people. Yeah. Change Let's put it. Boyles. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna send bile. <laughs> We're sending to bile Washington. and boils <laughs> to the swamp. <laughs> We're digesting this. We're yeah. gonna clean up that swamp Biles, with boils. Biles drain the bile. swamp. I gotta see it one more time. Oh, makes man. me, oh, makes so me good. laugh. You know, <laughs> by the way, that's his friend. Imagine that's how he introduces strangers. <laughs> shit, dude. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here and to introduce my my friend, Congressman Boyle Bile. <sighs> oh, God. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Congressman Brendan Boyle, but <laughs> the main reason why I'm here, forget that I'm Congressman. Power through. He just, uh, it's just like, uh, yeah, it really is like being brought up. You know, you're doing some C club in yeah. fucking Kalamazoo, Michigan, and right. the local feature. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this guy, I think he's. What's your podcast on the Adam Carolla show? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's Adam. 
Corolla. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's, it's so disrespectful. It's basically but this guy's retarded. It's in not that, his fault. In that thing you do when they were very early on in their musical career, the guy brought up the the wonders as the O'Neaters. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, which is still exactly. okay because O'Neaters is not a bad band right. name. Right. Royal Biles. That's a bad name. <laughs> It's a bad. Wow, it's a bad name. Boyle Bile. That's like the name of like some guy in Appalachia that's no, got a sex offender. You know I, what I mean? Like, yeah. That's a, you know what I would watch? I would watch a pay per view of Fetterman with a long list of celebrity names, right? And I would just go introduce them. <laughs> you know, and he'd be like, uh, "This is uh, douche douchebaggery," and he'd then come up and go, "That was." David Duchovny, <laughs> you know, and we just we just go down the line of who's Sarah Jessica Parker, <laughs> oh, like all man. all the fuck, yeah. all all, and forget about Idris Elba and like yeah. guys like that. They would never. It would just. I would watch that. Well, and heaven, then, heaven forbid he tries to say Schwarzenegger. Oh, I don't, that, want, I don't want to hear that it in front of his base. That's Holy shit. that's at the bottom of the list. That's what we're all waiting yeah, for. Yeah, don't put him up. Don't say Schwarzenegger <laughs> in front of a constituency yes. in Jacksonville. Yes, oh my political God. commentator yeah. Niger Ennis. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, NFL great Dick Butkus. Yeah. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. Dude, does it make you, okay, as much as we dislike Gavin Newsom, does it make you at least, are you happy that he shaves and puts on a clean shirt <laughs> yes, and presses yes. his pants? At yes, least. Yes. And, he, and he's at least, we know that he's evil, but he's like Kennedy evil. Yes, yes. There, there is some distinguishedness. Is that a word? No, but yes. He's, he's distinguished. Like Yes, I am at the point now where it's about people being able to articulate themselves sure. coherently yeah. has now become the bar mm -hmm. that a right. lot of these people can't reach. Right. There are many people on the right and there are many people on the left and at least they speak coherently. It's sure. now at the point where, you know, Biden's talking about building a bridge to the Indian Ocean and stuff. Like, yeah. look, like, like, <laughs> not like, across the Indian Ocean to, to the Indian yes, Ocean. Like, I, I, meaning, you know, you can you can disagree all you want with Gavin Newsom, and I certainly have, but. He speaks in complete sentences. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's he lies and he bullshits it, it, and he it, panders it, very eloquently. Yes. And that's you know I don't know I mean it's kind of what governments have been doing forever because back in the day like that's that's that old school like um, back in the day that was like politics. These are guys are very very smart and they're li and if they get away with lying to you like good they did a good job at it. Yeah. You know where now it's like they're not even trying. Well now it's kind of insulting. Sure. Whereas before yeah. it was sort of like, is he telling the truth? Now it's like you're doing what? Do you have a? Uh, are you ever to find Javier Bacaria? Still gathering the audio. You don't. Yeah, like, you don't have to mash it John up. John Travolta we can just did something put like it that back to back. Yeah, at the Oscars with uh, when he's introducing that singer Adele Adele Dazim. He's like, oh, Adina Mazel or something like that. Right. And that was a huge deal. This was way worse. Yes. I might have gotten that name wrong. I mean, yes. yeah. you know. Uh, we also have. Uh, a newsome clip from when he was on my show all those years ago addressing homelessness, do we? Because the problem, he said, when he was sitting where you're sitting on my show years ago, he was explaining to me that homelessness was his number one issue. Mm. That was 10 years ago. So he wow. screwed the pooch pretty hard <laughs> sure. on that one. Hey, but we got to give him a few more, a few more terms, guys. <clears throat> but he did a, he did a campaign ad where he was like, uh, you can't fix a problem unless you address a problem. But then he came on my show and talked about homelessness being uh, mother of three who worked a full-time job. Who was divorced? That's the face of homelessness. That's the face of homelessness. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, it's crazy. Uh, how would you fix a problem if you couldn't identify the problem? I think. Uh, Are you looking for the thing I, I cut? Yeah. Yeah. So this is not just that interview, but a little bit more in, in a little. Well, this is a, his campaign promise. He's along a sharp with, guy. With, I had mashed up a bunch of different things. With and this him. guy, he was banging. Oh. Uh, this guy was having. An, I think he was banging like the uh, when he was mayor. It's like campaign manager's wife. Yeah, like yeah. just G shit, like Good like dude. like G mafia shit. shit. Yeah, I was like, come at me. I don't give a fuck. Screwed your old lady. We'll see if yeah. we got it. Let's be direct. We can't solve a problem without first identifying it. 
Bullshit. What about the picture of real fa- homelessness, which is a poor mom with two kids with a husband who took off and left her, who's sitting there struggling on that minimum wage job, and all of a sudden now is out in the streets and sidewalks <laughs> desperately trying oh, to find some Jesus. help. Hold on. It's not stop an Has anyone seen that? The, <laughs> the true face right. of yeah. homelessness. Yeah. The, the true face. Has anyone seen yeah. a mother with three kids who was wearing a Taco Bell outfit who was recently divorced? Right. No, no, no. no. I mean, they all live together in a, a studio apartment. But we but can't. They got a house. We can't fix a problem unless we identify the problem and then goes on to completely misidentify the problem. Totally. Yeah. I'm sorry. You can play it. Which is a poor mom with two kids with a husband who took off and left her, who's sitting there struggling on that minimum wage job, and all of a sudden now is out in the streets and sidewalks desperately trying to find some help. The guy's dead. It's not an exaggeration. That's the truth. This is a year we want to see people moving off the streets. This is a year we want to see results. Our country is facing an existential battle for who we are and who we're willing to become. (laughs) And that's why we established this framework, what we call a 10-year plan to end chronic homeless in San Francisco. It's right, that's, that's, that's 08. He's that, a fucking that, idiot. That's uh, that's unbelievable. Though. Did you see? So the, he's been saying that since 2008. Oh yeah, oh, it's yeah. been 15 it's number years. One issue. Number one. He 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 did that interview with Hannity. Mm-hmm. Did you see it all? Yeah, I saw some of it. Yeah. He now when he he was confronted about homelessness, he's like. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. I, I, well, then they, he does this thing. He's like, there's it. too much regulation. No one can build a house. Yes, you're over fucking regulated. Yeah, of course. That's why we can't build yeah. a house, but it has nothing to do with housing. Here, so here's the here's the um, here's the cell. And uh, I can't remember if I brought this up. I was talking to Drew about it. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the cell. We'll take a quick break. Then we'll come back and I will blow all your minds right after this. Let me tell you about four Patriot survival food. Love these guys. I don't know if you know it, but uh, the UN, their food chief, he just warned that uh, famine's knocking on the door. And Barron's published a food shortage could be coming article even in the U.S. And that's why getting survival food now is more important than ever. Create your own stockpile of the best-selling four Patriot survival food kits. It's not ordinary food. It's good for 25 years. It's super survival food. Look, you love your family. You prepare. You have car insurance. You have life insurance. Why not food insurance? Hand-packed in a family-owned facility right in the USA, giving jobs to over 200 Americans. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, and all can be made in less than 20 minutes. Just add boiling water, simmer, and serve. Protect yourself and your family with four Patriot survival food. Right, Dawson? Right now and for the next few days, listeners of the Adam Carolla Show will get 10% off their first order at 4 by using code ADAM. Just go to 4 and use code ADAM to start your stockpile today. Let me tell you about Angie. Homeowners, you know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Well, let me tell you about Simply Safe. You've heard us talk about Simply Safe and how they were named Best Home Security of 2023 by U.S. News and World R- Report. Oh, sorry. I get so excited talking about Simply Safe. Well, they're not resting on their laurels, they're always innovating. New two in one smoke detector, CO detector, distinguishes between fire and cooking smoke, so you get fewer false alarms. Everyone here uses Simply Safe. We always have. They've been on board for over a decade. 
24-7 professional monitoring service, by the way. Trained agents respond in an emergency dispatching police. Firefighters or EMTs right to your front door, even if you're away or can't be reached. Cost under a buck a day, and right now you get 20% off your new system when you sign up for interactive monitoring. Just visit Simply Safe Two Eyes. SimplySafe.com slash Adam. Save that 20%. When you go to SimplySafe.com slash Adam, there's no safe like Simply Safe. <laughs> Johnny Mitchell in the studio. What's up, man? I'm fucking great to be here dude the connect i feel this picking up steam the connect with yes, johnny sir. mitchell is yes, the name sir. of the podcast check it out um all right i'm gonna blow your minds with an analogy as i'm apt to do but we have javier baccaria <laughs> one on there <laughs> i just need that next to uh uh boils limp dick or whatever it is as well well if, you hate you to have a boil a on, hate to have a boil <laughs> on your limp dick and i'm grateful to the members of my COVID team that I'd like to introduce to you now, who will lead the way. I'm really proud of this group. For Secretary of Health and Education Service, I nominated Javier Bacaria. Now, what's his, is he Xavier Becerra, or what's his? Becerra. Yeah, is it Javier? Javier Becerra. Javier Becerra. All right, so now you, you got your work cut out for you, Dawson. Mashing. Oh, well, we'll see, you got it? And to introduce my my friend Congressman Boyle Bile. <laughs> Definitely not a Jew, Boyle Bile. <laughs> All we right, could say so that with certainty. Can we'll, we not? We'll buy some time to mash it, mash it up. I just like him going back and forth, Dawson. <gasps> All right. Um, so here's the deal. Here's the problem, and uh, the only way to fix the problem is to identify as we know the problem. Now. Gavin Newsom. That was genius, Gavin. Zero mother of two, <laughs> divorced, working a full time job. Yeah. Find yourself on the street. Yeah. It, it doesn't exist. It's it not only exist. in most like like when you when you whenever you get into these arguments with these fucking retarded people mm -hmm. and you say something like, look, uh, the black community has a fatherless problem. Yeah. We need fathers at home. Fathers need to discipline their kids and help raise their kids so they can be more successful. They always go. I know a black woman right. whose dad left at birth and now she sits on the board of Nabisco and it's like, okay, yeah, right. that's I the representative get. of that, yeah. So first Everybody. off, that is a ass backwards approach to everything, which is I know a guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's that's, like a, that's I know a guy who didn't study for the SATs, mm -hmm. stayed up that whole night yeah. fucking drinking right. and got a twenty one hundred. Like yeah. Okay, so yeah. but we should encourage people to study for the SATs, you fucking idiots. But okay, you know a guy. In this particular case, with Gavin Newsom, there's not one person. I mean, there are plenty of black people who are successful right. who grew up without a dad. Now, that's still not a great well, look that, for your society, and things would be better yeah. if it wasn't that way. But yes, there are people... Yes. Oh, maybe Oprah didn't know her dad. Right. Fine. I, I get it. But right. in this particular case, I have crisscrossed and circumnavigated this town mm -hmm. for my entire life. I have never seen a mother of two who had a full time job yeah. and was divorced just slumped over on the street. She's in a shelter, right. perhaps. She's yeah. at a neighbor's house. Yeah. She's at her sister in law's yeah. in Indiana. It's hard. It's not pretty, but you but, can figure out something to put a roof over your children's yeah, head. Yeah, so this is zero examples, Newsom, but fine. But now here's the problem. And here's the problem with all the – where we're at as society, if you want to know where we're coming undone. Uh, if you notice, violence, homicide, murders are now referred to as gun violence. More gun violence over the weekend, mm -hmm. or over the Labor Day weekend. There was gun violence, or Juneteenth, there was gun violence. Yeah. Like gun violence. Um, now, it used to just be called violence, mm -hmm. shootings and murders, murders. and homicides right. and things right. like that. So what we're doing, is, and then if there is something called gun violence, and we've now labeled it all as gun violence, well, then you get to go, we got to get rid of the guns. Because that's the right, violence. The violence right. is the gun. So then you, what you do is you soften the soil. You like emulsify for a while. You go, don't say murders anymore. And don't say gang violence. Right. Say 
gun violence. Right. Gun violence. And we'll do that. Yeah. And we'll get all the fucking stooges over at MSNBC to repeat and the LA Times and yeah. New York Times. They'll all just switch it to gun violence. So now we'll all say gun violence. We'll do that for a little while. Then I'll get up and I'll give a speech where I'll go, we got to get rid of the guns. Because that makes sense mm-hmm. because we have a gun violence problem. Now, this is a problem because there's too many guns. We have gun violence. There's murders because of the guns. And the homeless problem is homeless. There are no homes. So we have a homeless right. problem because we don't have enough homes. And we have a violence yeah. problem, a gun violence problem, because we have too many guns. Yeah. Not solvable. Yeah. Because you're misidentifying it. The homeless problem is not a lack of homes. And the violence problem is not too many guns. It's who is holding the gun and shooting the other teen in the south side of Chicago. So how would you ever put a dent in the problem when you go, all right, answer, less guns, more homes. Yeah. Undoable, number one. Number two, it's a drug problem, Mm -hmm. not a homeless problem. Um, and it's essentially saying gun violence, got to get rid of the guns. Okay. I would say drunk driving accidents. We got to get rid of the cars. Sure. The car is the problem Mm -hmm. in in your using your logic. It's not the operator of the car. It is the car. So it's not the operator of the gun. That's the problem. It's the gun. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So now let's just get rid of automobiles, which they would never asked to do, but it's the same retarded logic. Sure, homeless, sure. less homes, right. gun violence, too many guns, yeah. misidentify, they know what they're yeah, doing, yeah. and zero progress the, in any department. They're both, the left and the right, when it comes to like violence, they're, the right pushes how bad the cities have gotten for mm-hmm. whatever reason they do, and the left obviously is trying to vilify guns. The reality is the numbers, unless you know places like Chicago might be the exception, Murders are way they've been murders have been down for like twenty five years. In yeah, America. you can Gun go is way down. You can go to New York and travel on the subway and stuff, of and walk around of and, and stuff. I don't know. I have not been to San Francisco in a while. I, I mean, they I, killed I, that. I, they killed the owner of Postmates or whoever the fuck that was. Well, that was yeah. an inside yeah, job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. that's right. That's awesome. Which I think, <laughs> I think that guy's going to get away with it. Did they arrest somebody? Yeah, they, yeah got like the the guy. Guy. they got the guy. The guy's sister was hanging out with him, and then he got upset, and like they drove off together, and he stabbed him. Wow, mm-hmm. it's possible. I think he's getting a cultural pass on that one. Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe because I think I think they're going to paint this guy as like a rapist and an abuser, mm-hmm. and this is basically um, the burning bed. Like he was, his sister right. was being. A raped and attacked and abused and fed drugs wow. and this was a murder of passion right yeah. and, and not it, murder one if he's going to get away with it it's going to be in california this is a great oh, yeah. place to get away with murder yeah it's just you can just do it yes we interviewed a uh this guy he's a former co corrections officer he's like dude they're letting guys that had life without parole they're like letting them out now well, maybe your roommate's out. <laughs> I hope so. We're, we're, <laughs> right? we're a sanctuary state. He certainly in deserves ways. it. Yeah. When you, uh, when you were dealing drugs, I'm sure like you and your cohorts probably dealt a lot with homeless people. Um, no, never. No? We were wholesale. We were like high-level drug traffickers. No, but when you were we, just we, like... We looked down on that kind of shit. Oh, you even know? like college and like the lower... When you were a lower tier guy, like... No, I never sold meth or fentanyl, uh-huh. you know? But, I mean, oh, that's fentanyl. what they want. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, look, even... Oh, yeah, like there's different tiers to drug trafficking, but like homeless people that buy drugs are usually they're not buying them usually from drug dealers. They're buying it from other junkies who are just using it as a way to make money to feed their own habits. So it, it, you don't see a lot of people like dr- proper drug dealers going down to like corners in the Tenderloin in San Francisco and selling out heroin and being really tight with their shit. It's usually they just give it to one guy who's also a user, and they pass it around. That's kind of like homeless. the homeless drug trade works. What about the mother of two who's newly divorced? <laughs> sure. Yeah, she get, yeah you probably deal with her. <laughs> the oh, kids I sold, in tow, right? Oh, I sold her to, to the kids all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Kids of single mothers all the time. You got your mashup, uh, Dawson? And to introduce my, my friend, Congressman Boyle Bile. I nominated... Javier Bacaria. Boyle Bile. Javier Bacaria. Boyle Bile. Bacaria. Boyle Bile. Bacaria. Boyle Bile. Bacaria. 
Someone should nice. sample that that's, shit. Yeah, that's no beat. shit. Yeah. That's yeah. Rhythm. All right. Next assignment. Put a beat under it. Why do you, uh, can I ask something? Why do you think, and then we'll move on from uh, politics or whatever. Why do you think uh, Newsom, what's the motivation to not address the homeless crisis? Like to push to push eyeballs away from like the real cause of it or what? Yeah. Like why paint this as like, a Oh, the real homeless face is a, you know, a mother of two. You know, I get in politics when you are taking a stand for something and you're really hurting people, but you don't care because it helps your cause. Yeah. Like for instance, yeah. Um, California, no school choice. Right. So the politicians would go like Gavin Newsom would say, I'm on the side of the teachers here and I fight for the students because when you take these students out of the school, it removes funding to that school. Because if we're going to do a thing where the where the money follows the student, then when that student leaves and goes to a charter school, Ah. then they're underfunded. And he talks a big game. But the reality is, is he's funded by the teachers unions the teachers unions don't give a fuck about the kids or they wouldn't have closed the fucking schools does anyone from the la unified teachers union would like to come on the show and debate me about you assholes closing schools remember remember i was a horrible guy for (laughs) suggesting you should open up and it was dangerous and i was racist so yeah would you like to come on post-mortem and have a debate with me on this or are you just fucking Cowards yeah. who are bent over right now trying to suck your own dick. <laughs> okay, no offense, Byron. They wish they so were that in shape. Yeah. When, They're working when, on their screenplay. When Newsom comes out with that approach, mm-hmm. you go, well, it hurts kids because yeah. obviously school choice helps kids. And then it actually helps bra- brown and black kids yeah. the most. Right. But they're still against that. But they're always talking about black and brown right. kids. But they're just up the ass of the teachers unions. And that's why, by the way, the teachers unions are able to call the shots. So schools are shut because the unions want it shut. The guy's getting all his funding from the unions. It's not going to go against the unions. You have that fucking um, miserable cow who's ahead of the teachers unions, like basically telling Rochelle Walensky, the CDC, like, nah, nah, walk that one back. Don't know. Weingarten. Wow. Randy Weingarten. Yeah, shut it. Yeah, you said... Rochelle Walensky had a press conference that said, I think it'd be safe to open schools. And then they got hold of her, Randy Weingarten, and went like, hey, knock it off. Wow. We want schools closed. No, the fuck it's not. And then she had to release a statement. It's like, I was just speaking as a mother, not like the head of the CDC. That wasn't official, even though I was sitting in front of a step and repeat that's a yeah. CDC on it. So they control the unions. Wow. Gavin Newsom doesn't, look, he cares about getting funding from the teachers unions doesn't care about kids. If he cared about kids, then he'd want choice. Mm -hmm. All right. But I get it. Yeah. He wants their money. Something like the homelessness. I'm with you. I say to Dr. Drew all the time, what is in it for you to misidentify this problem and make it worse on your watch? Why is that? Why? What is like you have sympathy like that that appeals to I guess it's also huge buku bucks like all these advocacy groups get tons of money. But is that kicking up to politicians like, you know, the homelessness is a huge industry. Right. But how are the politicians making money off of it? I I I don't know. I do know how it gets circled back through political donations. Yeah, I, somehow I'm you sure. don't, you give money, free money to yeah. the right people. Eventually, the unions or the other big dollar donors will come mm-hmm. around and give you your money back. Right. Yeah. So, and these people don't vote either. Homeless people don't vote. Fe- drug <laughs> addicts don't vote. So yeah. you know, single mothers ostensibly vote. Right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but I am with you. Like what? And and also they're weird. Newsom is one of those guys most progressive politicians are in this weird paint a bizarre picture. Like when I had him on my show and he was telling me black and brown people, half of them don't have access to checking accounts and stuff like that. <laughs> that like can't total, be true. It's a totally, <laughs> totally untrue. It's 100% untrue. <laughs> but if it is now you got your work cut out for you, like get the fucking work yeah. on, on doing this. Yeah. They're not interested. They don't work. They, there's some weird, I grew up with a mom who was this way, where they they paint you the real picture of something all the time, but it's never right, but it's always weird and sympathetic, and it makes them look empathetic. Yeah, That makes them look like, oh, I care. You don't care. I get what you want. 
So that's, you know, everyone who's coming across the border is fleeing political oppression mm-hmm. and is a mom just trying to find a better home. And these right. are hardworking people who just are looking for a better life. Yeah. Like that's all they do is sort of mischaracterize right. everybody right. all the time. Right. Everybody on a subway. That guy's a Michael Jackson right. impersonator. Yeah. He's a nymph who's yeah. dancing yeah. for the delight of the passengers. Right, the, right. Right. It can't just be like, uh, there's really no... George Floyd no was nuance. a hero. Right, right. George Floyd is a drug addict yeah. who held a gun to a pregnant woman once during a home invasion, but yeah. he's... He's just a he's also, just a martyr for the cause. He's just a, a good also guy. Also had a, a pretty killer amateur porn video though. Have you guys seen the oh, George Floyd porn? Did not see that. Well, first of all, as we can guess, your pervert uh, new hire Byron has seen it. Uh, George Floyd. First of all, guys, uh, as you can imagine, he's got a piece on him, right? Guy's mm-hmm. got a unit. And I don't. I'm no fan of black porn. You know, mm-hmm. it's not, traditionally not been. Right, it's like white rap. Well, there's where we the part ways, but right. continue. <laughs> but uh, no, this is a he's in like a Motel Six with like a hot black chick, and he's and he's banging her out with a what? condom. Yeah, so this is like safe. This was like what? a good. This is the best thing George Floyd ever did for like the black community's image. Is this porn? Yeah, there it goes right there. I had Look no at G idea. Floyd, dude. This is. I did not see this on MSNBC. I knew he was a <laughs> loving father of three. I didn't. Didn't report this part. Yeah, yeah. So I, we we went ahead and watched this, you know, twenty or thirty times, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, it was pretty. Time to get in the sleeping bag. Huh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, Byron, time to stretch it out. Um, uh, in two thousand and nineteen, twelve percent of Hispanics were unbanked, and thirteen or fourteen percent of blacks. Wait, um, where in not the, in 50%, the country? Percent, I don't know. In I, the he said in California. California. Well, here's the whole deal. California is basically half Hispanic. Yeah. So if half of that group is does not have, and by the way, always listen to the words access. Right. Listen to how access things to banking are discussed. Right. Everyone has access to a checking account because there's a bank on every corner. Yeah. If you would like to have a checking account, you may get a checking. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't say half of Hispanics choose not to get a checking account because then that's on them. Totally, totally. But he says don't have access. It's all about the control of the language. Right. Of course they have access. They'll do the thing. The blacks don't have access to ID. Yes, they do. They may choose not to get it but they have right, access right, right that's interesting to it yeah. I, I i don't need to study that's not even, even an interchangeable word i yeah. know that's that's what that's you have yeah. to listen to like yeah. all the wording like there's a let's see it's like double speak yeah You've got to dissect it i know i know hispanics a lot a lot of them a don't trust banks B keep money in cash. Before I was a comedian, I used to like work in real estate or like real estate and construction. So I work with these guys all the time. They got money now. Latino yeah. people that have been working for you know two hundred bucks a day, right. seven days a week, yeah, and and don't spend that shit adds up. They own real estate on the low. They send money back to Mexico, Guatemala, Central America, where they purchase property. Like they're not stupid. No, they can I, open bank accounts if they wanted. They're not children. Right. This is like paternalistic. Oh, it makes me it creeps me out hearing yes, like a white guy that it, looks like that being like black and brown. It's like, it, shut up. Yes, it's racist. It's racist. It's super exactly. racist thinking yeah. black people can't vote. Right. Or like don't know how to vote <laughs> yeah, exactly. or like don't have an ID or whatever. Exactly. It's uh, it's it's all insane. It's all it's unbanked <laughs> or underbanked. So there you go. That's what you were talking about. Like underbanked. First of all, what does that even mean? Oh, they only have one bank account. Well, that's <laughs> that's, that's most account. of Americans. <laughs> right. Americans only have four hundred dollars on average in their savings account. So yeah. I doubt they're banking. You know, I doubt they have a the president of Goldman Sachs on the phone. There, the listen. So first off, what is going on with where we're at now? Is this bizarre twisting of the language? Mm-hmm. All. All the time. Yeah. I knew some things on my mind because I guess uh, Dan Bongino ran it on his Rumble account or something. So people have been tweeting me that that clip, which somehow has had a rebirth 10 years later because other people have found it and retweeted it or whatever. But it's such a bizarre approach. 
there's also this part where the news has stopped being the news. Like mm. the reason Dan Bongino enjoyed me and Gavin Newsom is because I didn't let him go. I right. I had a thousand follow up questions for him. Yeah. It was not gonna. He was not gonna mince into my studio and tell me that 50% of black and Hispanic people did not have <laughs> access to a checking account. And, and I wasn't going to go, oh man, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. So now let's talk about your vineyard. Yeah. Like, right. Nope. I was like, not done. Yeah. You need to give me an answer, which he would not do foolishly. Were you pressing him or were you like lightly jabbing him? What would you, how would you, uh... um, it was a little bit of, it was, it, it was started off with light jabs, but yeah. then a, a, every time Adam kept circling back, right. It, it wasn't getting an answer. It started to get a little more mm -hmm. aggressive, yeah. but well, 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 that's why they don't do podcasts usually because, Hey, guess what? Motherfucker. We got time. Yeah. We well, don't have, well, uh, they'll go on friendly podcasts, but not sure. Not but how somebody many of those are exist. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. that, that interview I was talking about with when Sean Hannity just interviewed Gavin Newsom. I, I watch it. I mean, they they were really friendly with each other. They were, they were laughing, but I thought Hannity didn't really dig as deep as he could have, and he did. Yeah. He let go, he let Gavin go with some of those answers. That's interesting. Even Hannity let Gavin go. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll play it in the next game. You you can find there's a a two minute clip. Hey, are you guys devastated? You. Are you guys as devastated as I am about uh, the news that Spotify is not renewing uh, the Merkel podcast yeah. for a second season? <laughs> I I almost fucking. What am I going to listen covers. to? I got out of the cutters and wept. I was like, <laughs> oh, I did not Merkel. See that. Yeah, Merkel. Merkel. I did Merkel's not see that. the prime minister of Germany. Yeah. <laughs> Angela Merkel. Merkel. Well, she's got a Spotify deal, too. <laughs> Everyone but us. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're grifters, the Merkels, as our dude. friend Bill Simmons said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, and now uh, they're finding out she may not have been in the room for some of those interviews. Oh That's the latest God, one. Dude, they just voiced over? They just, no, they they just had like a... a oh, the production assistant did all of the interviews, and then they gave her a transcript and what she was supposed to ask. That's so. That makes me so happy. It's like it's you amazing. can't fake this shit. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. They okay. did 12, 12 podcasts for twenty million bucks. For 20 million uh, but but million let bucks. me just say about this: whether it's Spotify or Netflix giving the Obamas a hundred million dollars, or whoever giving Le, you know Nike giving um. LeBron James $2 billion for whatever documentary or whatever it is. Yeah. Fuck all you guys. I, I, every one of you who made a big, every corporate America, every one of you made a big fat donation to Black Lives Matter, fuck right off. Mm. Good. Good. Yeah. You got burned. Because the, you didn't do a deal with these people because you thought they were excellent content providers no. or super fascinating or interesting or funny. You just did a deal so you could put your name next to their name because you thought their name was going to score you some points. Mm. That's why you did it. Right. Well, if it's for branding, though, I'm okay with it. If it's if it's for marketing, like if a company is acting like a company, aka mm -hmm. doing whatever yeah. it takes to make money, I'm actually cool with that. Yeah, I mean, I am, I am to a certain degree. So there's two types. There's look, if you want to give the Obamas a hundred million dollars and lose money, but it's a lost leader, or whatever. Right. That's up to right. that's up to you. Right. Um, it's more about when you jump on bandwagons, sure, where sure. it's like, oh, there's voter, there's rules for voters in Georgia, and and now uh, United Airlines is pulling out of Georgia. Right, it's like, right. It's not. You got to base it on something, right? There's no it makes no economic sense. Figure it out yeah. instead of just jumping on. Right? How many companies gave money to Black Lives Matter just because? Sure. With no yeah. vetting, yeah. no where's the money going? What's it being used for? Yeah. Just, just yeah. literally going. I want to. I want to say that we did this optic. so we can score some optic points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we can find. I don't know. We can find the first minute of me arguing with Newsom. Somebody keeps whacking this clips up there's like a two-minute version of it just so johnny can have a laugh uh there's also a clip dawson that you can find and this is this is part of the other problem we're in i think it's stephanie rule who i'm quite attracted to <laughs> on msnbc she can watch me suck my dick anytime, oh, anytime. <laughs> anytime. or yeah, at least yeah. die trying yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> slip a disc trying all right let me kick my hands over my let me kick my legs over my head here stephanie uh this isn't going as planned. Could you drop a digit, babe? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would help. <laughs> um, she's interviewing Biden, 
and you have to, she's asking him about the Hunter Biden situation from like, I don't know, May 5th or May something. It's the way she asked the question. So it will be a, a, quite a contrast in the way I interviewed Gavin Newsom. Right. So we'll take a quick break. We got news as well. We'll do all that right after this. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts knowledge you need for your maintenance and repairs. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of the car. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. If your check engine light is on, O'Reilly Auto Parts will scan it and retrieve your trouble codes for free. If needed, they'll even refer you to a repair shop. When you're a do-it-yourselfer and need a specialty tool to finish the job, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and ask about their loaner tool program. Simply pay a refundable deposit and borrow the right tool. Then get your deposit back when it's returned. Ready for some new wiper blades? The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you pick out just what you need for your car and will even install them for you for free. O'Reilly Auto Parts has thousands of quality parts and accessories in stock that you might need to keep your vehicle running at its best. Place your order online at O'Reilly Auto Parts and then pick it up at your local store. You can even have your order shipped directly to your doorstep, giving you the freedom of shopping on your schedule. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Turo, T-U-R-O dot com. Johnny Mitchell in the studio. Fresh yes, out of the joint. <laughs> yeah. Going to be at the Bray Improv July 5th. The Connect is the name of the podcast. Right. Um, so we'll find that Stephanie Rule clip and we'll listen to the nuances of it. Uh, we got the news as well. We can hear me arguing with Newsom. I'll just play the first 40 seconds so you can hear what it's supposed to sound okay, like. Gotcha. So when politicians say preposterous things, mm -hmm. you need to follow up. Right. Yeah. Oh, nice. You had Edward Snowden in there. Didn't, didn't realize that. Kind of far <laughs> right. Or Jim Norton. Paul Bryan. <laughs> Half of African Americans in the state of California, roughly half of Latino families, have no access to a checking account or an ATM. Things we take for granted. They don't have a checking What's account. What's wrong with them? And what, but what, <laughs> well, because they don't, they don't have the resources to sock those things away. Well, why do we have them? Uh, we, a lot of different reasons, but, but roughly half those families don't. Where do they why end do up? Armenians have them? But where they end up is <laughs> in check cashing places. But I want to know why those lenders, groups, why advantage. those two groups don't have access. Well, and there are a lot of... Uh, just happens to be that we can so talk they're about flawed? The, no they're hardly flawed but they're struggling genetics are making flawed. their work hardly not ab absolutely but okay not. so but absolutely do Asians not. have this problem I mean a, a lot of communities have a lot of whites have these problems oh, but so I just, that's not just black and Hispanic no but it but, but why did you bring you, up black and Hispanic because the magnitude is ominous but why so many of them it just happens to be the just, magnitude. that's the way God planned it not at all well it what just, happened to them there are a lot of issues and with it, that the communities are struggling a lot why of new are they immigrants, struggling? A lot of, a lot of different reasons. Lack Hispanics of opportunity. Have been here. Blacks have been here longer than we've been here. Well, we can we can we can surmise. What all about that. Asians? Oh, they were put in internment camps. Yeah, we in fact it all initiated out at San Francisco. And all right. The Chinese Exclusion Act came so out. So they are they the check cats? Are they the check cats? A lot of a lot of Asians certainly do. Oh, so why don't you why don't you conclude because them? The only reason why is the magnitude. Well, there's the so many the more. Base. The magnitude and percentage. But there's terms no way to figure out how that happened. Africa. We could talk about. It. You know what I'm dealing with? 
I don't want to have a sociological debate. Oh, sure, I want why to deal would with you? Have, no. no, here's why. Why would you want to do that? Because the person from the Times wouldn't write good things about oh, you if God. you did that. No, no, that's not the case because I want to deal with reality. You don't want to get into that. No, no, no. You want to deal with reality. I want to deal with reality, reality of people is. that are struggling, people are suffering. I want to deal with the problems in why a pragmatic way. Why are they struggling way. and I don't suffering? Want an idea. We can hold hands and surmise about all these underlying why are they, reasons. I don't want to do that. I want to know why they're struggling. Why are they struggling? A lot of folks are struggling because they can't find jobs. Why blacks and Hispanics? Why blacks and Hispanics? Across the board. Why? Okay, so everybody's everybody everybody struggling. So uh, Asians are suffering uh, just as much as blacks. Uh, the, the, the face of welfare is not an African American family. Oh, so, 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 it's it's Asian, a, Jewish, it's all of them. Uh, Caucasian, it's okay, a lot so of folks we're all struggling. Society. <laughs> dude, that rules. He's yeah. such a fucking idiot. That rules. But by dude. the way, you're a politician. There's an issue. Yeah. By your own admittance, there's a large issue mm. if 50% of this group, who's your constituency, yeah. does not have access to a checking out. Okay. What is the plan? Yeah. Sure. Tell me about your outreach programs. Right. You got together with B of A and Kevin Hart, and yeah. we're doing a thing together. Kevin Hart's underbanked. Yes, you know he's that. under yeah. on size. He's underbanked. Yeah. He's undersex. <laughs> he's oversex. Wait a minute. Like, uh, but see, he did have an answer. He did have a response canned, but he just wasn't ready to have his armor pierced a little more every time. Well, this that's argument, why he, he he eventually goes. Yeah, we're all struggling. You're yeah. like, what? Yeah, human the human existence is suffering, motherfucker. Ugh. God, he's such a fucking Damn, idiot. dude. But that's that that's crazy. We need it almost makes me like wish like Arnold Schwarzenegger would run again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause who can you know they have there's it's been politics has been so monopolized in California that there's truly nobody to step up to challenge him. I watched a Schwarzenegger three part doc. It's great. I thought it was great. I have much uh, respect for the man. Same. But he yelled at everyone to put on a mask and get vaccinated and then told everyone to fuck their freedom. And then he lost me. Well, his dad was a Nazi. His, I dad, his, dad, fought, his dad fought for the right. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> Some people I are like the right. him. His dad was to the right. Take a vax <laughs> that half the people don't need yeah, and wear a mask yeah, that doesn't yeah. work and fuck your freedom. Right. Douche, you came to this country yeah. to be free, right. asshole. Sure, sure. The, fucking walk that shit back yes, and you'll get my, my vote. That's I don't want to hear fuck your freedom in that's a thick true. German accent. <laughs> <laughs> that scares me. Yeah, totally. All right, we got some news. We have uh, they have this Stephanie Rule clip, which is which is good. I'm in love with her. By the way, they got better babes now. You notice that MSNBC stepped up their they their post game. It. Yeah, they stepped up the post game because <laughs> they had to compete with Fox. Fox That's had right. all the babes, and now M MSNBC's got some got some trim. Nice. Yeah, I know. So listen to the way she asked. She's she's going to do an interview with Biden. She's got to ask him about the Hunter Biden laptop. Or the scandal, uh, she must do it. It's a right. it's a fiduciary thing, but there's two ways. Like when a cop pulls you over, you can go, "You've been drinking tonight," and you go, "Nope." And they go, "Good enough. Have a nice day." Or you can go, "I smell alcohol in your breath. Step out of the car. I see a beer can in the back." Mm. Like mm. there's a way to ask and say you've asked and keep on moving. Yeah, which is what she does because okay. she doesn't follow up. But it's the way, right? The way, listen, listen, so it's a phraseology, sure. like when we were talking about uh, not having access. Yeah, right. Or or how about this? When they go, um, Hobby Lobby has denied contraception to their employees. Like, they don't provide a pill. Right. They do not provide a birth control pill. Sure. That is not denying contraception. Right, right. As I say all the time, I do not provide lunch. <laughs> Yeah. For these idiots, yeah, but they all eat lunch. Right. You I denied us. You're you denying deny, us. You deny lunch, them yeah. lunch. Chris is eating a hoagie, and I bum rush him and slap <laughs> it out of his hand. Not on my watch. Mm. Yeah. Um, not providing contraception is is not denying right. contraception, right. and people choosing not to get a checking account is not not having access yeah, of course. to a checking account, which is a new fucking world yeah, order and yeah. has totally destroyed the language. Everything, spun. Like the, everything is fucking right. spun yeah. in the verb. So she's got to ask about Hunter, but she's got to do it in the softest way possible. So <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll listen to her. Sir, there is something personal that's affecting you. Your son, while there's no ties to you, could be charged by your Department of Justice. How will that impact your presidency? All right. 
pause, pause for a second. Yeah, pause. First off, there are plenty of ties well, to him. There's well, there mild, are no ties to him. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> to by you. the way, okay, so you're a hard-nosed investigative journalist, and that's how he has like, listen, this is personal. No, it's not personal. It has to do with the country. Yeah. Personal is like, oh, I got a carbuncle on my nutsack or right, something. These right. are personal issues. The, the allegation is your son with you in tow are traveling around to rogue nations right. and shaking them down making, making for money. Deals, yeah. Making deals to get paid to use your influence. So why are you doing it? Why are you asking a question as a reporter? who lets the person off the hook in the asking of the question. Yeah. Roll it again, yeah. where she goes, it's a personal thing. <laughs> so now, first thing it's couched is, well, people are just fucking with your family. Yeah. This is a, it's yeah. a personal thing. Yeah. This is the last 30 seconds of this of this interview. Yeah, this is a personal thing. Nothing to do with you. No. No, just Nothing. your son. Yeah, he's just who's your flying on air. He's flying on Air Force Two. But, and you're the vice president, but not nothing. He's got to raise money to pay those crack dealers back. A bunch of emails that say the big guy dead. on it, but there's nothing to do with, with you. Yeah. What do you say to that? And yeah. then he'll go, I love my son. I'm proud of him. And then we go, all right, next question. I want Fetterman to answer this for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my tripper? Yeah. <laughs> Where's Jack? <laughs> I'll call that guy Jack immediately. So there is something personal that's affecting you. Your son, while there's no ties to you, could be charged by your Department of Justice. How will that impact your presidency? First of all, my son's done nothing wrong. I trust him. I have faith in him. And it impacts my presidency by making me feel proud of him. Well, <laughs> well that, no, didn't no he, follow-up questions. Didn't he smash? Wasn't he hooking up with his dead brother's wife? He was not only hooking up with his dead brother's wife, but he was like contacting female employees who he like, owed money to or they owed him or whatever going just take a shot give me a titty shot and right. you won't have to pay me back the hundred bucks or right he was doing the shit that the left goes berserk yes over yes, just yes. berserk over <laughs> nobody gives a fuck yeah no nope. yeah, i'm I mean, no boy scout either you know you? I'm, I'm no boy scout. You've been, you've been in the joint. I've been in the joint. You know, I'm as liberal as the next guy, but I mean, you're, you're, you're fucking your dead brother's this dude, wife. dude, you're like a two-time fart flasher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm a three-strike fucking two fart flush. flusher, dude. I'm, <laughs> two, I'm two flush Mitchell, but like, uh, let's have some standards, you know? Yeah, Ben, find the story about him and like women who work for him and the fucking shit he was doing to those women that is Hunter yeah. Biden yeah. that... MSNBC not interested. No, not interested no. in that at all. It's no, awesome. Talk about the pay gap, but no, uh, you know. <laughs> That's right. All right, we'll That's do crazy. a little uh, a little news. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So an update on that submersible mm. that um, went to go check out the wreck wreckage of the Titanic and and is now lost. So a, a couple things. First off, this morning, um, as of this morning, it, it's been revealed that they have about. 24 hours left of oxygen. I basically heard someone say that thing had a catastrophic failure failure on the way down. It was just like crushed. They've been it's dead a, for four Right, minutes. yeah, if this like, thing if this thing really did crush and it, it would it would kill them. Oh, uh, okay. Than, Can you fill me in? What's going on? Hold on, less than how much time, Chris? It's less important. Yeah. Less than 15 minutes? Less than 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. That's how fast it would, it would You're be. You're a little Jacques Cousteau. Yeah. I'm just, that, yeah. That's how important I, it is. I think there's a catastrophic failure like on the way down. Well, I, I don't even know what's going on. They're, they went to yeah, so visit they, the Titanic? Yeah, the, yeah. so this company rents out or this submersible. It's like $250,000 a seat. Um, there's, if it's five people and you just go down 1,300 feet. Oh, it's like going to space. It's like the opposite feet. of like getting shot up in space. Yeah, but you go okay. down. You go down to the depths of, of wow. the ocean, and, and you. Uh, That's wild. Yeah. So, but now, but they they're now lost, and so oh. everyone's so there's all these all these rescue missions as we speak trying wow. to find them. Um. So it's now been reported that they uh, one of the rescue vessels have heard banging, like like uh, knocking. Um. They think that that could, that's a good sign because they're trained, um. Like uh, you're trained to knock every like half hour or something in a certain way to show that you're there and you need help. So they heard some knocking. So they think that that's what it is. So they're looking into that, but still no confirmation if it's them or not. Mm. Um, now, can they not find a vessel like that? There's not like the, there's no radar or right. Yeah. All, all, all that just was disabled. Like after it weirdly after like a couple minutes, like 
No, they're talking about our radar our, finding them, oh, not, yeah, not like them so pinging. Oh, yeah. They're so deep. They're 13,000 wow, that's feet incredible. Deep. And yeah. so they were going down to look at the Titanic. Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, where is the Titanic? It's in the Atlantic, but yeah. where? Like It's like 375 miles off of Newfoundland. Yeah. Oh, Newfoundland. gotcha. Yeah. Oh, they weren't that far, man. Right, so so there's a, there's a few things about this. So now people are looking more into it, and they're they're surprised at this how small this thing is. It's controlled by like a video game controller. It, yeah. it seems janky, even though the, I mean the whole thing's made out of titanium and carbon fiber. But um, mm-hmm. so just just a technicality of it. But yeah, so they, they have about a day left of oxygen, if mm. you know if they're still if they're yeah. still there, and uh, it's it's not looking good. But um, and and now people are more looking into like the CEO. By the way, CEO is in there. Yeah. So it's wow. three. It's three uh, uh, paying customers, the pilot and the CEO of this company. <laughs> right. And um, and so now there's video or interviews of him that are uh, part of the pun resurfacing, that it's uh, uh, that they didn't want to hire 50 year old white guys with military experience <laughs> to captain these vessels because we're he, home. He didn't find them inspirational. Yeah. Enough. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. We we yes. Get get we a need, black woman who uh, let's you get know. Kamala Harris in yeah, there that's to right. control that sub. Well, I let's mean, get look, someone from Hunter College. That's the whole. I am telling you this affirmative action thing. First off, first things first. As an old white guy, like I was literally sitting around today, going, "This sucks." Because when I was a kid, the your whole job was to become an old white guy, so you could yeah. fucking get all the perks that of came course. along with yeah. being an old white guy. Now. Fucking your pariah. Right. Now that I, I, the yeah. only time in history where it's been shit to be an old white guy. I know. Right now. We had to be born the, the into it. Fucking second, I'm an old white guy. It's the only time throughout the history yeah. of the yeah. globe yeah. where it's been bad to Worst be. Time. And I'd be smack dab in the yeah. middle of it. I know. Jesus I fucking know. Christ. What did we ever do to deserve this? Oh, my God. It's my time to shine. That's right. Um, but anyway, yeah. So we'll, I'm sure we'll hear more. Uh, get an update tomorrow if they call the search off or anything like that. And so but. the CEO makes Was a video there. saying, "Yeah, you want here's here's a tour of the the interior if you want to." Now he he gave a tour saying, "I don't want an old white guy, gotcha. like a submariner right. from the military, like but, a young, fresh faced right. sub operator." <laughs> <laughs> but ironically, you talk to black people and any anybody who's not white, and they're like, oh, when they get on a flight, they're like, "All I want is an old white guy." Yeah, with the, they see that arm hair, that forearm yeah. hair. Yeah, great they look forearm like, hair. And they yeah. look like they just napalm. What fucking Sullenberger? Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what you want. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you want a guy who you, flew an F four. Yeah, over yeah. Mig Alley. Exactly. Who napalmed a Vietnamese village? They're like yes. that motherfucker takes orders. He's going to get us there. Yeah. So here, here's this quote: When I started the business, one of the things you'll find there are other sub sub operators out there, but they typically have gentlemen who are ex military submariners, and they you'll see a whole bunch of fifty year old white guys. I wanted our team to be younger to be inspirational and i'm not gonna inspire a 16 year old to go pursue marine technology but a 25 year old you know who's a sub pilot i just listen the notion that everyone has to look like you to motivate you is fucking insane it's crazy just you you don't need to be the same age you don't need to be the same heritage you can just see people kicking ass doing something and then you can go i would like to kick ass and do that agreed thing as well agreed Um, the world's watching do we have a Interesting Hunter Biden harassment stuff. It's pretty interesting. So let's see. Exclusive set quote set phone up so I can spy on you showering. And that's quote. what he's asking his employee to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Hunter Biden threatened to withhold cash strapped assistance pay if she didn't FaceTime him naked. Text show as it's revealed she's the fourth employee with whom he had a oh, sexual shit. relationship. So is, this is, is a lawsuit. Is Stephanie Rule. Or anybody on MSNBC, are they interested in this kind of horrible objectification of, of women holding back money unless you right. show me pictures of yourself nude? Not an issue? I guess no. not an issue. And no ties to you. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. And, and deep down, I mean, deep down, we've kind of all have wanted this out of a, a sexual partner at some yes. point. But we would never, you know, let that out. We never actually mm. go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are some yeah. women where you're like, I wish you would just never talk well, and only we talk of sex. Restraint. And Yeah. yeah. There's the problem is, is it's, it's all in the laptop and they can't admit the laptop's real. So <laughs> they can't admit that this this is real. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Text obtained by DailyMail.com show uh, first son ass assistant for video sex. Uh, the rule. Um, see, the rule has to be no talk. <laughs> 
<laughs> anything but sex and we must be naked he wrote yeah, dude biden filmed their sex session and saved the images on his, on his laptop. laptop i'm driving that nobody he didn't trust it so in the cloud all, he's like i want the all the people who care the most about the treatment of women yeah utterly silent yeah, yeah. which was just i go then you don't give a fuck yeah then you don't give a shit because if you did we'd hear something out yeah. of you all right, sorry. I love this Robert Duvall. It kind of yeah. reminds me of like Apocalypse Now. It's a picture right there, of him you know? with a shirtless. Sorry, go ahead. So uh, let's go over to Colombia. They mm. right now have a cocaine hippo problem. Ooh. Yeah, so C- Colombia's invasive hippo population is even larger than researchers had thought, according to the most thorough census of animals conducted yet. They have about twice as many as they thought. So it's considered the l- hippos are considered the largest invasive animal in the world, threatening native plants and um, mm. and animals in the country. And these cocaine hippo- hippos are all descendants of yeah. the three females and one male illegally imported by drug cartel leader yeah. Pablo Escobar. Yeah. I'm How do you sure. smuggle a hippo? Yeah, no shit, right? I, I mean, <laughs> I understand I, keistering a little cocaine, yeah. but yeah. smuggling a hippo, yeah. that's a tall order. <laughs> you got to grease some palms. Yeah, no, somebody's getting paid off. Yeah, oh, you know? yeah. Like, we didn't see this. What's the largest animal? physical thing you've had to traffic or, or smuggle? Uh, I mean, I guess like 10 pounds of weed in a box. That'd be pretty big, you know, but you'd shrink that down, shrink wrap that down to like a block. You know what I mean? Like this. What was the method of getting it? Never, I never used hippos to smuggle. That's <laughs> no, for no, sure. You, went, you know who smuggled you know? a hippo into this country? The greatest car dealer of all time, Cal Worthington. Cal Worthington. That was his no dog spot. No shit. Yeah, there's footage. That's insane. How do you fucking get a hippo in here? The saddest part of my childhood is that the most entertaining part of my childhood was watching Worthington Ford commercials. <laughs> right. Like... Entertainment for me was watching Cal Worthington and his dog Spot, which would be a different animal every time. Yeah. One of them was him riding a hippo. And I'd just be sitting in my shit box in North Hollywood when I was 11 going, oh, this is high end entertainment. <laughs> yeah. You know, my my son just got wa- got done watching like Transformers 5 and gave me the, eh. Yeah. You know right, what I mean? Right, like in right. front of the mega screen. Right. You know, I had to watch a fucking. White guy ride a hippo for for twenty two seconds. Like right. that's as much right. as I that's as yeah. much as I got. Yeah, and they don't encourage black kids to to ride hippos. That's they don't the, have access the, to hippos. They don't have access to it. Exactly, fifty percent of them. That's uh that's really a terrible childhood. Yeah, it's horrible. Sorry, man. But I think when you see Cal Worthington riding his hippo, you'll go, oh, okay. He also would do a thing where he had like a Bengal tiger. Oh and wow! He, and he did a thing where he like held the leash, and he ran across all the cars, and the tiger leapt from hood to hood to hood. But you'd see the suspension bottom out of all the cars, <laughs> and I'm like, you just broke a bunch of a arms and yeah. busted some shock absorbers. Uh, we have aren't hippos uh, like the most one of the most dangerous animals? Yeah, yeah, they not are. cows. That's no, his that's dog's crazy. Spot. No way, dude. Here that's got to be on like some downers. That's got to. They have to shoot that thing yeah. up with like barbiturates. Yeah, because those things will. Their jaws. The, uh, the you, PSI on those things. They're, mm-hmm. they're they're like twelve feet. They say the the big bull uh, hippopotamus. Can't be twelve feet. Like yeah. when they open their jaws. Can't from, like, be twelve end, feet. Maybe six feet. It, I don't know. If dude. it crushed your head, you would die in less than. Five feet, 15 man. Minutes. Okay, fine. Sorry, that was yeah, an exaggeration. Right. Twelve uh, meters. Just keep it real. Meters. Um. <laughs> wow, dude, that's fucking insane. There's no way you wait. Would... Play him. Can you play him? Do I have it? Al Worthington and his dog Spot. What the? You want more for your trade, Pussy Cow? He will come right to your aid, Pussy Cow. Yeah, it's that's a cutie, though. He's, he's riding a hippo. Pussy Cow, Pussy Cow, Pussy Cow. Yeah, that... cow. This is the place to buy a used car. Acres and acres of cars on special sale here at Worthington Ford. All these cars have been... The Arid Hippos are insanely aggressive. Mm-hmm. They're fast as hell, yeah. even even in That's water. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that thing must have been on some Had to major been, right? downers. Yeah. So now... Or it have just been... They're going to... Uh, uh, sh- walk it's going to... Victim um, energy. Maybe... 
So now, are they going to kill the hippos? Well, so here's the thing. So more on these hippos first off. So after Escobar died in 93, the hippos escaped from his estate and established themselves in the Magdalena River. Estimates show that there are about 181 to 215 of them residing in Colombia. They have their own cartel now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, They're semi-submersible. But here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so so Colombian officials have struggled to manage these hippos after they ordered an aggressive male to be killed in 2009. The uh, soldiers got together and took a picture with this dead hippo oh, and a lot of backlash. Pam Anderson is not going to yeah, be happy so, about so this. They don't want you to do, they don't want them to do that. But um, one strategy they're, they're thinking of and they're trying to administer is they have contraceptives that they can administer by dart. Mm. And so they're trying to just, uh, you know, Hobby Lobby <laughs> doesn't no, provide they denied. access, <laughs> denial of hippo <laughs> contraceptive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, but, but they said that on a scale as big as this, they don't know how effective that would even be. Wow. Damn, they're going to have yeah. to kill them. Yeah. yeah. Poor like, animals. Or ship them. Why can't they just ship them back to Africa? I, I don't know that it's easy to ship them. Yeah. I don't know they have the resources for that. <laughs> and I don't know what they do in Africa. Like, you just drop them in a rando river <laughs> yeah, over like, there. Do they, 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 they ever want them? Right. I, I don't oh, know. I guess so. Well, is Worthington Ford still around in Long Beach? Because I got some places those hippos could go. Yeah. Cal seems to have dominion over them. <laughs> yeah. He's a hippo whisperer. We'll Seriously. bring Cal in and he'll just close his eyes, put his fingers on his temples. And... <laughs> yeah. He's like a pimp, dude. Yeah. They do, what they, they do what he says. That's right. He's got strong hippo hands. He's a hippo pimp. <laughs> hippo pimp. All right. Let's do one more. That's fucking crazy. All right. So there's, there's this uh, thing that happened in March of... 2021. I don't know if you heard this story, but this guy was working at an auto repair shop, and he uh, he didn't receive his final paycheck of nine hundred fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. So he goes to the U.S. Department of Labor and complains about it. Mm-hmm. And his boss hears about it and gives and decides to pay him the money. But the way he does it is he dumps nine uh, nine hundred fifteen dollars worth of pennies, so ninety one thousand five hundred pennies, onto his driveway with a note on top that says "fuck you." And by the way, all these pennies are coated in oil. Oh yeah, so you say he's a transmission guy, uh, he, auto repair guy, auto know. repair. Yeah, I don't know. Damn, that's vindictive. And what, yeah, right. Yeah, so there. Yeah, so there's the uh, pile of. I like when people coins. pay the IRS that way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. So, um, so of that's course, wild. Department of Labor's Wage and Hours Division uh, found found out about it. Uh, there's been a lawsuit, and now the boss of this uh, auto repair shop is ordered to pay this guy who got the pennies nine thousand, about not, a little less than nine thousand dollars in back wages, and then another uh, like about forty thousand dollars in back wages to eight other employees because they found out that they wasn't paying them overtime. Oh, mm. okay. so because of all this attention he drew for nah. doing this, he now has to pay. Yeah, a lot I more still money. like the cut of his jib. Yeah. You like it? <laughs> yeah, I like his spirit. He gets nine thousand pennies. 91,000 pennies. 91,000 pennies, sorry. Dips them in used tranny fluid yeah. and shits them out all over this guy's driveway. Yeah, here you go. It's, it's still legal tender. You yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. yeah. The guy just shovel them up and, and put them in a wheelbarrow. I would s- say, ladies, never break up with this guy. Yeah, no, this, this guy. is not <laughs> a He's petty. Uh, this is not a bad breakup yeah. guy. <laughs> exactly. He there are take going it to be good. issues. That's he doesn't right. Take it good. Well, what an idiot, huh? He's going to now he's bankrupt. I I had a I had a job where I never got paid. I, I, no one ever got paid overtime when I used to work in my construction job. Well, you can go complain about it to the Department of Labor and maybe get <sighs> made whole. I fell out a two story window, landed on cement stairs, busted myself up, and fucking limped back to work wow. the next day because I thought I was going to get fired. Right, right, exactly. You were worried about losing your job back then. Yeah, yeah now. Yeah. Well, everyone's up in arms. Like in in Texas, um, Governor Abbott just signed a bill uh, that uh, denied, or there there was a law that established ten minute breaks for every four hours for construction workers to drink water and protect themselves from the sun. Yeah, and part and uh, Governor Abbott gave final approval to a law that eliminates that, among amongst other things. That's just crazy. But everyone's focusing on that because well, um, because I'll tell they're, the they're reaching like triple digits in Texas now. Here's the problem with these laws, anyone employs anyone. Um, anybody in California, anyone can, anybody who quits can just sue whoever right. and, and they'll get paid. Yeah. Because what they'll do is at some point the lawyer will go, did you, 
mandate that they took a 10 minute break every two hours. And I'm like, uh, no, they did whatever the fuck they wanted right. all the time. Yeah. Half of them were just playing video games the whole time yeah, they were yeah. here. Like, I don't know. You didn't take a right. break from Tetris. Yeah. Like, well, if you didn't make sure that they did this, it's like, I wasn't even there half the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, that's a violation yeah. and we got an issue. So it's not so much that the most of regulation and a lot of this stuff, it's not really that the idea itself is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. It's, it's dogs in the airport. It's like, is it a bad thing that people that are seeing impaired can travel with their service dog? No, that's a good thing, mm -hmm. but it turns into a shit show right. when we open everything up. Sure, so sure. what, so it's like, Americans with disabilities, there's laws. There needs to be a handicap, accessible bathroom stall and yeah. all that stuff. Ask anybody who's opened a restaurant in California if they weren't fucking sued by the guy who goes in there and finds out that the grab bar is three inches too low right. next to the commode yeah. and has lawyered up with a guy who files 2000s of these suits to settle out of court. They get the regulations get abused yeah. and that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. The, the idea of like, is it a good idea to have a grab bar for a guy who doesn't have to use his legs to get off the commode? Yes. Yeah. Is it a good idea to have a 10 minute break every two mm -hmm. hours? Like, yes. Yeah. These are all good ideas that get destroyed mm -hmm. when lawyers step in right. and people start suing everyone. Right. Yeah. It's, it's true. Like the, the more laws you put on the books, the more laws get broken too. Oh, the you know more regulation. I mean? And, and the then you have retard get Gavin Newsom's like, why can't we build more houses? Because you've regulated yeah. everything to such a degree where a one bedroom flop house costs $850,000. Yeah. Right. If you're living outside of Atlanta, you get acreage yeah. in an indoor pool yeah. for $850,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a one bedroom mini house yeah. for eight hundred and fifty, dollars and we can't do anything because we've over-regulated. Mm -hmm. And then you who created all the regulations sit around and go, why is there so many regulations? Mm -hmm. Fucking reel it in, douche. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, did you see, just think about California and think about COVID. And think about what all, what all those dudes did. They fucking pounced. If you don't think their mindset is to regulate, look no further than California and COVID. Like, they all went, what the, What can we do? Yeah. What can we do? Uh, six foot, uh, mask up, uh, two-year-olds, uh, throw, throw, get them out of the workplace. No, no, no outdoor diet. Like, yeah. You guys all showed your hand yeah. by diving into the deep end yep. of the regulation That's pool right. as fast as you possibly could. And that's why people don't want to do business. No, that's absolutely true. Thanks, Johnny Mitchell. Yeah, man. I All approve. right, Max Zapata. Hey. I think we've uh, drawn to the end of the show. Me too. Um, I am going to be in Monterey tomorrow at the Golden State Theater and then uh, Uptown Theater. That'll be Saturday in Napa. Johnny Mitchell's going to be at the Bray Improv. That'll be uh, May 5th. And then the July 5th. Oh, July 5th. I'm, I'm That's so right. sorry. July 5th. And then uh, The Connect with Johnny Mitchell's the podcast, wherever you find finer podcast as well shoot him instagram at mr johnny mitchell as well go to amcrow.com for all the live shows until next time i'm crow for johnny mitchell and chris max pat is saying mahalo <laughs>